podcast like this. Who gonna bring it? Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy E C E O, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing. Miss Jamaica, what's going on? Not nothing, my dad walk on. Hey, man. Hey, uh, hey, another day, another dollar. Yes, sir. Man, hey, man. We want to thank everybody for, uh, you know, subscribing, liking, and, you know, tuning in to Boss Talk 101, man. We've been loving the vibe. A lot of the questions that went out last night was, I got a lot of different answers mm-hmm. and feedback. I'm loving it. I'm going back in today. I can't wait. I'm getting, I'm, yeah, y'all better be watching, man, because I ain't telling what I might Check do. Check out our YouTube. He talking about our YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube, man. Hey, uh, uh, man, hey, so uh, we got a special guest in here today. Mm-hmm. He really don't need no introduction, man. I mean, he helped me through some trying times. He don't even realize it, man. Just a lot of the stuff that he brought to the table during the time early in the 90s, man, when I first started tuning in to him, man. His brother was dope. Uh, during a time when a lot of people were going through a lot of different things and we didn't know how to deal with it. Uh, he spoke volumes to different people, not just in California, but everywhere you know the song uh this is a multi-platinum artist mm-hmm. this guy is yeah he 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 one of them guys you know some might not know the name but they sure know the voice oh they know the voice man lamar lubin is in the building how you doing my brother what's going on deuce deuce, deuce that's my name hey man deuce. lamar deuce lubin that's what man name Mo- lamar deuce lubin is in the building what's up everybody what's hey up? man boss talk 101 what yes, a boss is talk yes i love that i love that I, love, I gotta give a shout out to you know i gotta get melvin farm I got hey Mel, Mel. he was here a week for last. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, he called me. Actually, he called me when y'all was here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you did. He was like, you know, you got to come on. You got to talk. Do your thing. You come to Dallas. Um, um, I'm out here in Dallas. I'm having a great time. I got to thank my boy Glenn, my boy Derek Douglas. They they showed me out, showed me up last night and tonight and everything. So you know what? Um, Dallas has been good. I haven't been here in like 20 years. I ain't gonna lie. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, I been here like why have you abandoned Dallas like that? Well, you know what? It wasn't that. It was just that when I came, I was on tour. Mm-hmm. So you know, um, so you know, some people gonna find out about my story. You mm-hmm. know, because uh, you know we was big back in the day. So mm-hmm. you know, we went everywhere. And then we kind of fell off. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when that happens, um, you don't get people wanting you to come back. So, you know, normally, you know, I'm in L.A., you know, you'll get Vegas, you'll get some shows like that. Maybe, you know, New York, you may get some shows, you know, back east. But But a lot of other cities don't want. But for some reason, the Midwest and the South, um, we don't really get a lot of, you know, we don't really get a lot of people saying, hey, come on back and let's Mm -hmm. do this. But... One thing with my song, and some people will tell what the song is in a few minutes, but um, um, but there's been a resurgence in my song. A lot of people have been, you know, coming to me and say, "Hey, can you do this song? You still sing it?" And um, I think it's because of what's going on in America right mm-hmm, now, because mm-hmm. we have all the violence. With it. There's mm-hmm. a lot of violence, man. We got brothers still killing brothers. And mm-hmm. We just got a lot of stuff that's going on. So um, my song, a lot of people. You know, say, hey, there ain't never been. And you know, it's a trip. There really has not. And I toot my own horn, but me and my boys, there really hasn't been another song like that Mm -hmm. that's really come out. Nah. (laughs) They mimicked your song, but they came out. I mean, it, it didn't it, it didn't hit like yours hit. Yours yours just came at the right time, and it's the right. You can never make the exact same feeling once the you make a song. You are the originator, and I get that. But there's a lot of people that really leveraged off your song to 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 make other songs like your song. Yeah. Uh, when I say that, you know, like Master P did that. I miss my homies. That yeah. that's your song. He just pretty much redoing the same type of song, but it's your. Your, it's your, your you, you guys is, are the ones that paved the way for those type songs. And you know, and you know what's really a trip is that you don't, I guess because it was me, uh, sometimes when people come up to me and they be like, oh my God, I love the song. And, oh my God, you, you know, you're a legend. I'm like, I ain't no legend. I'm just Lamar. I'm just Deuce. You know what I'm saying? And you don't think about, this is what I never thought about when we did the song. I never thought that, um, I thought it was going to be a hood, like, you know, it'd be like Anthem in the hood. But when a woman came up to me, a white lady actually, and she said, uh, she had a biracial uh, grandson, and she was came and she just started crying. She said, thank you for thinking of my grandson. She said, when I hear that song, it, may, it reminds me of him. And she told me the story, what happened to him. And that's when I realized, I'm like, damn, everybody goes through death. Exactly. Everybody, everybody goes through death. And it no don't matter, matter what, what color, color you are, no matter. No matter how old you are, um, nothing. What, it don't matter what you do in this life or who you are. Everybody, death is going to come, mm-hmm. and um, and what I realized is that we were giving credit to those people that a lot of people felt 
weren't worthy mm-hmm. of getting credit to and, and paying homage to and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm glad, you know what I'm saying? I'm blessed that we did it. Let me but ask you something. There's a reason why though we did it. Though. I know, I get it. We're going to get to that part. But I want to go back. Uh, we are usually go back, like I told you earlier before we was on. I want to hear about just coming up as a kid, like who – Lamar was as a child, as a as a young man, you know, from about twelve to fifteen, right? Maybe even earlier. Or? Even earlier, I like to go. She'd be going all the way back. Like, did remember. you have a single parent in the home? Well, and all that well, good stuff. Well, did you come up in a balanced home? You know, how did you make it out? The all reason why stuff. we go back because a lot of things that happen in people's lives, it um, stems from an early age, and then we don't normally realize what it is you go through until this time in your life when you can reflect because with age hopefully comes wisdom not for everybody but majority comes wisdom and you can reflect and be like that's why i acted out that's why i am where i am that's why you know what i mean no no i no. and in, in my bio y'all saw you just my bio it talks about i was yeah i was i come from a, a single you know i had my mom i had my dad uh of course i came from a single family though I did come from a single family. And um, I grew up in a little town called East Palo Alto. I don't know if you mm-hmm. Okay, that. okay. Now, East Palo Alto, when I grew up in East Palo Alto, it was the murder capital. And that's uh, L.A.? No, no, no. This that's is in the Bay Area. The Bay. This is the Bay Area by Oakland and uh, San Francisco. It's called East Palo Alto. Let me, uh, many of you guys will hear know about it. And you look it up, it's going to say it was murder capital from when I was a kid, you know, uh, Grew up with pimps, because players. of the gangs, or because no, no, no. Of see what? See, Northern California, Southern California is kind of different. Okay. Um, Southern California, they had the gangs because you know they had the Crips and the Bloods, but in Northern California, we didn't have that. We had cities, so it was based on what city you were from. Mm-hmm. So if you're from East Palo Alto, you funked with maybe Menlo Park. So you had LRs, PLRs. You had, you know, what I'm saying those that lived in San Francisco, lived in the, you know, uh, lived in the in the projects. They would have funk with, so when you went places, you know, San Jose was coming up, you would fight because the city you were from. And then, um, so I grew up in that, I grew up with that. I grew up with people, you know, I'll be honest with you, I grew up when, um, in Palo Alto is a white community, mm-hmm. and Stanford University is there. Well, I grew up in the black side, which is called East Palo Alto, is unincorporated. And what happened is, is that I grew up when crack was put into our community mm-hmm. where we would have white folks that would drive from Palo Alto and Mercedes and all kind of car Porsches and stuff like that. And they would come over to our black side and purchase, you know, purchase cocaine, purchase dope, you know, weed, all kind of things, mm-hmm. you know. And so what happened is, is that we became the ones that were selling it till we became the ones that was on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And our community started going down. And then Oakland got like that as well. You know, because Oakland was a popping community. I mean, it was really thriving. But what Atlanta is today is what Oakland was mm. back in the day. Wow. You know what I'm saying? But one, one thing I realize mm-hmm. about society is that um, just like everything that goes in and out of style, so does where you live. Because at one time, New York was the place that was popping. Everybody wanted to live in New York. That's the place that you did everything. The money was flowing, blah, blah, blah. Then everybody moved from there and went to Miami. Then from Miami to Atlanta. And then now, for some reason, I see a lot of people heading to the Carolinas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. North Carolina, South Carolina. But you know what? That's because you can stretch your money in South and North Carolina. <laughs> you really can. And then it's two hours from Atlanta, so you mm-hmm. don't got to be in the hustle and bustle, but you can get down there if you want but to. But mm-hmm. let's go back to where you were from again. Well, now, just, now, I want to talk about the no, he's, Now, he's, now this is what I want to tell you, though, about East Palo Alto, because I got to give East Palo Alto's props. So East Palo Alto was a black and Latin and Samoan community. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so that's basically, and we lived... You know, we lived together. And what happened in East Palo Alto is the Panthers came through Mm -hmm. and they opened up a a university called Nairobi College. Now, Nairobi College was supposed to be a college where Africans and African-Americans were being taught. And I believe Angela Davis was part of that project and stuff like Kwame Turi. Mm -hmm. All of them were part of that. So it was a thriving community. And they had the, you know, the college there. We had Africans. So so I'm telling people that. So the way I was brought up. I knew about Kwanzaa since I was born. Okay, mm-hmm. I okay. Grew up, I grew up. I grew up knowing about my black, you know, my black culture. I grew up being proud of my black culture. I grew up 
knowing who Mandela was. And you grew up with your mom and dad in your house? No, he said just no, one. just my mom. Just your mom. Just my, mom. My, dad your was around, my dad was around, but my mom and dad weren't together, so my dad was around. So he 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 had an influence in your life. Yeah, my dad was always my dad was a hustler always. You know what I'm saying? He opened up. He had a barbecue restaurant. He had a, he had a uh, before. Uh, remember when he used to do the the yogurt shops? Mm -hmm. My dad had a yogurt. Shop. My dad was one of those black men who. Uh, and my dad's mixed. My dad was one of those men who he always wanted to come up. Okay. So he always was hustling, trying to mm -hmm. do the next thing. But the only thing is he never stuck at it. So he'd open business, great, you know what I'm saying? And then like two years later, he'd sell it because mm. he's trying to get to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I realized that, and I'm glad you said it about knowing where you come from. Mm -hmm. It took me a while because I had a lot of anger from my, my parents and my dad and stuff like that. And then I had to realize that my dad, I found out one time, told me something about his childhood mm -hmm. and we started going back and I realized that my dad never knew what love really was. Mm -hmm. My dad, anytime a woman did anything to him, uh -huh. he went against it. So he and didn't know how to show love. He didn't know how to show love but he wanted people mm -hmm. to love him. And I, and this is what I realized. I said, how can I be mad at this man telling him I want love and he don't know how to give it? So we have to start learning that. But I applaud you for asking that question because so many times we grow up not asking our parents because some people would think, especially on the older school side, think that it's disrespectful to ask your parents certain questions. Because I have older cousins who would say, I would never ask my mom why she's like that or why she doesn't da 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 because it's not my place. I, I just know that's mom and I love her for who she is. But by not asking certain questions, you don't learn how to heal. You don't know where it comes from when they don't show you certain love or why they act a certain way. And all it does is trickle down into generations because it passed down to you and you pass it on to your kids. Your kids, yes. But so Again, that, that, that what you say is profound, but a lot of times, like I told you earlier, um, a lot of times people disregard even the earlier states of coming out of where our people have come from. So we can say on the surface of what's going on now about passing it on down, but when it goes to where we really, really first seen all these transitions of dysfunctionalities come from, where, where our family was being ripped apart and where people were being set against each other and where, you know, uh, you had to have the big bones or if you didn't have big, you wasn't a big, broad-shouldered guy. They didn't pick you. They picked the other one. Then they would let you get with a woman on your plantation, strip away from you. We disregard all of that, and then we jump up to where we're at now and act like everything's okay yeah, and but move you gotta on realize forward. that. But you got to realize this. We weren't really taught that. Now, the reason why I kind of was, my eyes were open was because, like I said, I come from East Palo Alto. Uh, we had Nairobi College. We wore daishikis. We wore afros. We, we grew up with that. We grew up with knowing where we came from. I mean, think about it. My, my cousins, Mandela, Rafiki. We had Abiyama. We had people with names that were African names that meant something. Yeah. We learned all that. But so you happened, did, but a lot did. of people didn't. A lot of people didn't, but what happened, we, did, though, we, we celebrate Juneteenth in the South. Now, let me tell you this. My You're family's <laughs> from here. My family. So growing up, I always... so. I know I was controversial on, on one of the blogs I did because okay. I was telling people, why the hell is we celebrating um, the two years afterward? Why black folks always got to celebrate like our failure? I mean, no offense, even though I'm glad about June, because I grew up, because my family's from Galveston. So I grew up doing Juneteenth as a kid. That was always our thing in the summertime. We always did Juneteenth. But then for people from Delaware and New York, talking about, oh, Juneteenth, that's our black... Um, that's our um, that's uh, that's our black for, uh, 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 Independence Day. No, it ain't your independence. What it is is two years later on the uh, island of Galveston, black folks didn't know that they was free, and it was two years afterwards. The real independence was actually nineteen what sixty three, January first. So honestly, I really kind of feel like we on on New Year's Eve, black folks, we really should have like you know what I'm saying. That's when we should celebrate, not. The after effect. Well, let's mm. get back. To the, I want to go back into your story a little bit more because I want to walk up to uh, the, D, the, the DRS. DRS. I want to yeah. see that. I want to go into the stages of how you were with DRS and how y'all formulated that group. And I don't. I, and I also want to know if you can still bring that song in like you used to sing it. You were the lead. Yes. So we, we, I want to know if you still could do that because what I see in Michael Jackson. He starts listen, smiling. As long as what I see in Michael Jackson, them, you know, your voice change over the years. I also seen a lot of guys who's uh, who, uh, yeah, they can't do it like that original because you get older. 
Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. But you know what? Do, but you know what? Right. You know what? Right? But you know what? <laughs> but see, that, I hate that because that's that that's that ageism in, in Hollywood, and, and 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 this is what I hate. Every time you get on a tabloid, they tell you age, and you know what I'm saying. And they do that on purpose. <laughs> yeah. You know, they do that on purpose to tear you down a little bit. And I tell people, I don't care. I might. I, see, I'm 70. I'm a still to me. I mean, look at uh, what's his name, Tony Bennett. Mm. Go he's home. 100, he's 100 years old, and he's selling millions of copies of albums. Go home. So on. don't. Don't come at me telling me, oh, you getting old and you can't do this no more. Because I'll be honest with you, I feel like I'm better now than I was because I've learned so much more. Like I was just telling my boy in the car, um, my grandmother was a, uh, I have an adopted grandmother, who, uh, her name was Linda Hopkins. Okay. She's from New Orleans. Okay. She was on Broadway. She got a star on the Walk of Fame. And that was my grandma coming up. And she, I remember, um, I was thinking, you know, you know, I'm number one. I'm thinking, oh, I'm the, yeah, I got a number one song in the country. I'm doing this. Um, I just beat. Um, I, I, we got not only on the on the R and B, but we got on the pop charts. Number one, you know what I'm saying? And and um, and I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, I got this. And I really, my grandmother came to me and said, Yeah, you cool, but um, do you know music theory? Hey. And I was like, Music theory? I don't need no music theory. I'm number one. Okay. And she said, Look, she said, Until you learn some blues. And you learn some jazz, she said. You ain't gonna go nowhere. She said, if you learn jazz and you learn some blues, you'll be able to sing anywhere. Mm -hmm. You go to, you take some music theory. She said, you'll be able to sing anytime, anywhere you want to. And I really rejected that for a while. So then I went to, I took this course in uh, L.A. Um, at this college, and I took the music theory. And you know what? I ain't gonna lie. I was just telling my boy, I can have a cold and still sing, and people won't even know it. You know what I'm saying? My nose can be stuffed up because I've learned because. What music really is, it actually is the manipulation of air. That's what people don't understand. When you're singing, ah, mm -hmm. you know, I told them there's a difference. You got your nose, you know, ew, doom. You know, a lot of singing, ew, doom. But then you can go, yeah. Oh, 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 you know that's <laughs> when you come man. in your gut. You know what I'm saying? And this one, and no offense, you youngsters, learn how to sing in your gut because when you get older, that's what happens. When the people singing in the Mm -hmm. When the people are singing and they know it's hard for them when they get older. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, because your nostrils change. <laughs> but I love it. But, okay, so with with age, um, how do you keep that vocals the way how you do? Like, I know you practice, but how can you advise these younger people to, I know you said sing from your gut, but is there any other, other advice you can give them? Well, this is what I tell people. Um, I To me, um, like my boys were asking me, oh, are you nervous tonight? But no, I'm not, I don't get nervous because to me it's a job. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what God put me on here to do. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I do try to take care of my boys. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'll do the tease and I'll do all that kind Does of that stuff. Does that work? No, sometimes, no. Sometimes like, like the kind, I have a mixture like cayenne pepper and I do the uh, uh, apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. and I do that sometimes. If I'm, you know, I do the, um, I do some, I will have this thing uh, called Singer Savers Grace mm -hmm. that I, I do. And uh, I spray it sometimes. Yeah, because with traveling and the changing of the weather, that affects your voice. Very much so. A lot of people don't know, like when I'm doing shows, people get mad. Why is it all hot in here? I don't want air on my voice. The air, it cuts Cracks down. Cracks it up. Because okay. people don't understand it's a muscle. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, like when you're working out with your muscles. When it's cold, you really don't, when you're in a gym and it's kind of warm, you don't mind getting kind of physical. But when it's cold in the gym, you'd be like, okay, one, two. Mm. Yeah, but a lot of this you learned over the years, though, man. Well, but I learned it also with the you theory. Went through with the theory these stuff. different things. Yeah, because I'll be honest with you, when I was a, when I was young, I was like, what twenty when I when I did when I was young and I was in my group, I would just sing loud. I just thought that was it. You know, I said I was powerful. But then, um, luckily, with um, MC Hammer was my manager in Capitol. I was on Capitol Records. You was so MC Hammer. How was that? MC <laughs> That's a whole nother story. <laughs> a whole nother story. You know what I'm saying? I, I, know, I didn't to, even know I'm he was managing. I'm still oh, trying to get my money. I was, under, I was he had under a lot I was, of people. I was on the road really? with it. A lot of people don't know. I'm on pumps and the bumps. I'm on all that. You know, wow. pumps and the bumps. Hey, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> it's all doom, 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 doom. Because he's a very, isn't so he that don't in person? Well, you know what people don't realize is that remember when he did Funky Headhunter? Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, who did he look like? Us, because we were under him. Right. And I really believe that that's the reason why he picked us up, because he needed that street credibility. Wow. So he went and got DRS. That's dope, man. So he actually was our manager and uh, our record and our record company. And and uh, and no offense, but I, I, I need my money. You need, <laughs> you need that cheddar. I need MC my cheddar. Hammer. That's why I'm MC back Hammer. out here. I need my cheddar. And so uh, so that was, but I have to admit, even though right now I'm, I'm upset about 
the financial stuff and some of the things. I one thing I will tell you, Ham, and if you're watching, I want I do want to thank you though because he did teach me some things in the industry. Like like uh, like you said, oh man, don't nobody come on time. Well, I learned that from him because he yeah. would find you. I ain't gonna lie, Hammer was like very good. He find you. Mm. You come late. He always said, be on time, be a little uh, beforehand. Um, he would be, and he, he 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 put us through interview lessons. Um, he gave me Doc Holiday and them uh, to do uh, my um, my vocals. Mm -hmm. to teach me about my vocals because I'll be honest with you I was just loud and uh, strong but wrong you know what I'm saying so and, you had to take and, vocal training well yeah because you have to understand that when you're singing a song uh, the first person to come out it's got to be smooth mm -hmm. you know like the song we're going to do I'm doing I'm with DJ Cali Remix yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying I'm working with him now and uh, we and um, he's got some artists some Southern Soul so I'm going to start doing some Southern Soul but you got to realize you got to ease into it mm -hmm. you know turn off the lights and then at the end you always get the Oh yeah, baby! You know you got that. You got that gruff. If you notice, that's what Jodeci did. You know what I'm saying? They did. Jojo, Jojo comes in with the smooth, and then Casey. Oh, yeah. you know he does all that stuff. Yeah, he comes in right because, after that because it's like a story. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And so in the beginning, when I was young, I knew I could belt it, but I just started from there. So I had to learn it. I had to, you know, you got to go like a stair step. You got to go up, up, up. And that's what we got to teach these youngsters nowadays. You know what I'm saying? You got to teach them that kind of stuff. You know, yeah, because yeah. Cause if you just go out there and just be just loud, you have nowhere to go. Yeah, well, you know, that gangster lean, man, you know, it was, it, was, it hit hard that for my homies, man. Hey, man, listen, man. Well, you know what? Say, man, that helped me so much. I thank you, man, just because of, like, like when I think about it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, around the time, you got to realize we had just come off that hyenas of colors and all that. So when you look at the way that thing marinated together, it kind of gave you a, a, a understanding of people are dying, but we got somebody to soothe it with a song. And that's the way I looked at it, because it was around the same time. Well, you I, know what? Let me tell you about what happened is when I got with the group, the group was, I'm going to be honest with you, the group was already formed okay. when I got with them. And what happened is they got with um, Easy e Okay. Easy e liked the concept of the group. But they said, well, we need some new singers. So they got a guy named EJ, EJ Turner, and that's the smooth guy in the, in the, in the song. And then they said, okay, this is cool, but now we need a, a Jodeci. We need a, we need a KC for your group. Mm -hmm. And so I'll be honest with you. I really, I was in college. I, I can, I'll be honest with you. I, I, um, um, I went from, I'm, I'm going to just give you all my real. So I, I, it wasn't that I was a bad kid. It was just that I think that I was a little, um, let me see. School was not the, my favorite place to be. So, um, I got kicked out of regular school. Mm -hmm. And I got put into a continuation school. I don't know if you guys know what a continuation school. Yeah, come on, man. So I went to continuation school. And what happened is, um, I ain't going to lie, I thought that, I was like, well, you know, I ain't going to really do nothing in life too much because I'm in continuation. But because I was already in this gifted program called GATE and Mensa program, math, engineering, science, uh, when I got to the uh, continuation school, they were like, well, we can't kick you out of it. So we got to keep you in those programs. So it was almost like a, it was the best thing for me. So I'm like private school. So I had one teacher, and you know all the other kids was doing the remedial stuff. I was doing the advanced stuff, and they were like, "Hey, you know what? Um, why don't you?" Um, so they were like, "Why don't you do this Title Eleven with the school board and do this and that?" So I started going, making speeches, talking, and a lady from a church saw me and was like, "Hey, you know this young man? You know you 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 went on the wrong side, but we can still save you." And that's what we need in this community. We need saviors. We need people. And uh, her, name was, her name was Ollie Watson. And I always thank her because she um, the the she we went to Southern University, and they had a, a luncheon, and she and it was the chancellor of the college that was there. And she said, "Can you make? A, can you do a speech?" So I, I did a speech, and I was thinking, "Well, I go to community college, do whatever, you know." And I did the speech, and after I did the speech, I just talked about what I went through and why I was at the you know continuation school and what happened. And Chancellor's name is Chancellor McClure. He just got up and said, I want young men like that at my college. Wow. And he said, if he would allow me to let him go on a college tour, um, whatever college he decides, we'll give him a one-year scholarship. Mm. Nice. You know, and That's I was going to go. My mom was like, Negro, you, yes. you better go. So I went. And, of course, I had to pick Southern because, you know what I'm saying, if they sponsored it, I was like, but I fell in love with the school, Southern University, when I got there. And I tell people all the time. How did you, I, okay. You 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 went to Easy. You didn't bounce the way away from. Okay, EZ. I'm sorry. Okay, so I want to hear about Easy too. You can't just skate across. I rocked out with Easy, and and it didn't. You know they picked him. And how did how was did you have a relationship with him? So this is what happened. The group. Um. So Easy liked the concept of the group, singing gangsters. He was like, Oh, this is cool. 
And they had a nice look, but they didn't have a sound. So when I went and I auditioned, this is this is the, this is the truth. I went and audition. I went to this, and I wasn't. I really wanted my two cousins. My two cousins could sing really well. I come from a singing family, and so I wanted them to be a part of it. And I said, you know what? I'm in college now. I'm about to graduate. I'll be a manager. So I went to one cousin, and I didn't know that he was he was on drugs, and they didn't know that, and I couldn't find him for the audition. Mm -hmm. My other cousin, DeAndre, he 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 he's still a minister of music right now in the Bay Area. Uh, I went to him. He said, God told me I'm not doing secular. I'm mm -hmm. gonna do, and I'm like this. If I tell you I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna tell you about Deuce. If I tell you I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna either try to do it or my best. If I can't do it, I'm gonna try my best to do it. And my people and my friends and DJ Cali Remix will tell you. If I say I'm gonna do something, I go ahead and I say, okay, I'm gonna do it. Okay, you're a man of your word. Yeah, I'm a man. Well, see, and that's another thing we need to teach about today's society. We got to start being men of our word. If we say we're going to do something, do it. If you, you say you're going to email somebody, email, email somebody. Yes. If but you say you're coming I... back in a little bit, come back in a little bit. Don't say it if you're not, not going to do it. it. You know? So I went to the audition. Call somebody, you know, so, no, hey, I'm going to call you. I hate that. Just, you know, and my thing, <laughs> call is, somebody. And my thing is, I went to the audition thinking, because my mom, I ain't going to lie, my mom, we got into an argument. And my mother said, Negro, you just want to do it for yourself. And I said, no, that ain't true. But my mother told me she was trying to talk me out of it. She knew that I really wanted to do it myself. So I went to this uh, DJ, and I told him, I said, hey, I, I think I'm going to go to this, this uh, um, audition. I need a song. And so he gave me a Temptation song and gave me the Johnny Gill, My, My, My. Mm. So I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm bad with lyrics sometimes. Sometimes I have, to, I have to sing a song sometimes 20 times just so I can remember the song. And so I, only, I didn't have a lot of time. Even today, you're still like I, that. I, I, oh yeah, I, I was, he was asking me a glimpse. Like, what do you do? I sing and sing and sing in my head. Sometimes people are like, "Are you offering another word?" No, I'm thinking the lyrics right now, okay. like in my head, because I'm like, I need to make sure. Okay. And I go like, sometimes we cheat. Sometimes you do the. Some people don't even know you do the first verse mm -hmm. over again, and mm -hmm. don't even realize it. But but um, what happened is, I went in there. And um, I put on the my 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 and back then you know we had the cassette you hit tapes. that thing then you. we had the and so I'm all my 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 and I'm like oh shit I don't know excuse my friend <laughs> I don't know the rest of the song so I just my 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 I just started <laughs> and got in my witness you remember those remember they used to have the uh, curtains that used to go like this yeah, yeah. and the multi purpose and this white boy opens up the curtain and runs out and at that time. In the 90s, they were doing it in Cali. They would call you and say, hey, you want a television? Come in. And you go there, in a warehouse, and you think, and you go, oh, actually, I actually have a warrant for your arrest. <laughs> <laughs> they would, they was doing that. Right. And I thought, oh my God, I did something I forgot. So I just take off running. No. And the guys in the group that were there, they used to carry these little bats. I don't know if y'all see some pictures. We got pictures where we had our names on bats. And they just instinctively picked up the bats and ran after me. So I thought, oh, they, they trying to beat me down. No. I don't know what I did. And I'm thinking, oh my God, like, you know, y'all gangsters, y'all got to Pendleton Zone, you're sagging. Like, what I like, I'm like, did I do something before I left mm. went to school and didn't remember it? So they was running. They go, no, 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 no. His name, and his name was um, Terry Heller. Okay. And it was Jerry Heller's nephew. Damn, mm. Jerry and, Heller. And what happened is he goes, oh, no, 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 no. It, it, it's cool. It's all good. It's all good. He said, no, I just haven't heard a voice like yours. Because now, mind you, I didn't think that out of everyone in the family, I thought I had the worst voice. Wow. Because I was a Teddy Pendergrass kind of singer. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody else had them sweet melodic, you know. Right. And I thought, well. <laughs> but nobody... I was, that's what made you different from everybody. Did else. you do the my God, my God? My God, my God. Could you pass on a message for me? <laughs> Tell him to put down those dice for a second, Lord. And I sang a little bit in the front part too, a little bit. I Just see. Little bit. I heard it when you said that they had to come get you. Yeah. So, so when it, so when it happened, so what happened is they said, no, no, no. We're just trying to find. So I thought that they was full of shit. Excuse mm -hmm. Can I cuss on there? You good, oh, man? I thought it was full. I said these niggas ain't shit. And I thought if y'all like my voice, what the hell y'all sound? Like? <laughs> what the hell y'all sound like? So what happened is, um, so EJ was like, man. We need you. So they said, well, we're not saying that you're in the group, but <laughs> can we get your information, your email? Can we, you know, like where you at? And I, I just happened to come home because I was interning for Channel 3. Because mm -hmm. I'm being honest with you. What I really wanted to be, I didn't even have an earring in my ear back then because I wanted to be a telecaster. I wanted mm. to be on the news. I, I wanted to either be a sportscaster. I wanted to be like, well, you know, Who today inspired you to, to want to be that? Um, You know what? Uh, Howard Growing Coast up, said. no, growing up. <laughs> no, no, no. Growing up, I, 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 liked, I liked acting. And I did like to sing, but I didn't think I was a great singer. I thought, I ain't gonna lie, I thought I was, I wanted to be Denzel. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be, I wanted to be an actor, like a serious actor, 
go out there, you know, get awards and stuff like that. So I never really thought that. And my mother said that. I always thought you'd be an actor. I never thought the singing part mm -hmm. would come along. So um, so the next day, I'm asleep. And I, I come from one of them traditional, my mama is one of them churches, you know, the saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit kind of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. ladies. And someone, All right. Someone called us at 6 o'clock in the morning. And my mother was like, this better be good. Mm -hmm. She woke me up. And I was like, I get on the phone. And um, God's my witness. The homeboy from Chris Pick, they call him Pick. Uh, he was like, "Hey, hey, uh, Lamar, uh, can you can you do a little Jodeci?" And I was like, um, at, "In the morning?" Yeah, I was like, oh, "Dude, are you just waking up? up? Your voice not like, all that great?" And I go, "I don't really know. The, can you? You gotta feed me." The, oh, well, this is easy on the phone with me. And I was <laughs> like, "Nigga, shut up!" <laughs> <laughs> right, easy. -E. So I'm, I ain't gonna lie, I'm talking easy like this. All right, Easy E, <laughs> what you want with? Hey, can you just sing a little? They told me about you, so I started, and so they started feeding me. Put on your red dress, and I was, you know, like you know, it. you know, house in my home, and it's thing at all. You can have it all, make it love. And so when I did that, Easy said, "That's him. That's him. That's it. That's it." <laughs> and so he said, um, "What you doing tomorrow?" I said, what? I got to, I said, what are we doing tomorrow? And he said, I need your name. I need your, you know, your, he needed all the information. And um, one thing I have to say about Easy, he, he got me a ticket. He got us a ticket the next day. Mm. And we flew out to LA and we were met at the um, airport with Holes with Attitude. Remember Holes with Attitude? Mm -hmm. They was there and you know, he was like, whatever you want. I mean, he was just very accommodating. And it was cool. We met with them. They liked us. And then we heard that there was another group. And they were from St. Louis, and that was Bone Thugs and Harmony. And they was like, we did it. Back then, This is, I'm real old school. We had things called demo deals. Okay. And the demo deals were three months. They gave you a three, month, um, three months to be on the demo deal. And after the three months, once three months was up, they had one day to either decide to keep you or let you go. Uh -huh. And I was told that, um, because at the time, Suge Knight was interested in us. Um, we had a lot of people that were interested in the group. And um, at the time, our production company, Whole Nine, um, they had just signed a contract with MC Hammer. And so they were like, well, Ham wants to see you guys as well. And so um, when we were told that Easy didn't pick us up, which I found out now was a lie, the dude in the group who started the group didn't even tell us Easy called and wanted us. Wow. Um, he Man. thought it was better to go with, well, you know what? I'll be honest with you. At the time, Easy's, um, his persona, um, he was like, do you go with Suge? He's like, well, he's a gangster. You don't want to get killed. Do you go with Easy? You, been, you know, you hear all the stuff talking about, oh, he was taking the money. So we thought, oh, we go with the church boy. We'll go with MC Hammer. But he was the most gangster one of all of them. I heard about you know, it. Saying, you know, I heard he was. Because you're thinking, oh, I'll go with the guy to go to church. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, holy, holy, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you thinking, and then, and, I'm, and no offense, Ham, but I really look back and go, God, we should have stayed with Easy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we should have stayed with Easy. Yeah. Easy was a cool. Honestly, a lot of stuff you talk about, he was a cool dude. Um, you know, um, a lot of wisdom. A lot of wisdom. A lot of people didn't understand that. Easy came from a lot of wisdom. He came from, see, a lot of people, you know, and, and I think this is what Melvin was ta we was talking about. A lot of times um, we, we look up and we say, oh, you know, these gangsters, this and that. But a lot of us wasn't true gangsters. You know what I'm saying? We we, we, we hung around people that were gangsters. Because I'm going to be honest with you, a true gangster like Melvin and them, they don't want to be on the media. They don't want to be on television. No, no, no. They don't want to do their dirt in front of everybody. They don't want to brag that they killed people and they sold this He many, wasn't even supposed to be on the ranks. panel that day. I know you've seen the big uh, blowout yes, in here. Yes, yes. It, 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 went, yeah. it went viral. It was all over World Star and uh, it was on uh, Vlad. Uh, Vlad and all Cam Capone and all the Southern uh, Dallas Global. Everybody well, was Well, I mean, I'm be honest with you, but, but, the, listen, true, but the true gangsters, true, true, no offense, the true and y'all, y'all, that was his rappers, first time. Y'all rappers and Lamar, the people that they, were, old, they never I'm been down on with this and that. I'm gonna be honest, I'm an OG. I'm gonna tell you the truth. You ain't worried about studio time. You ain't worried about getting no rings on your finger. You ain't worried about getting a Grammy. You ain't worried about why are my billboards not that. You worried about the streets. You worried about your hustle. You worried about making money for your neighborhood, your family, your baby's mama. You worried about that. So you know when, what I'm saying? when you, you don't want to do it in front of, and you don't want everyone to know your business, because when you talk and you let everyone know your business, you know people research and you know what I'm saying, and that's that's a way of you uh, leaving this world. Because mm -hmm. you got a lot of one thing, you got a lot of haters, mm -hmm. you got a lot of people that get mad when you come up. Definitely, you know what I'm saying? definitely. I was just telling up. my son that before y'all got here. 
um, you are a uh, true uh, legendary guy, man, uh, for what Thank you me. guys have done, man. Uh, where's the other guys in the group? But you left them. You didn't left the group. You left. No, 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 no. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I own DRS LLC. Okay. And so I go under as Dirty Rotten Scoundrels or DRS. Okay. So I have two other guys that I hired, and they come along with me sometimes when I'm doing the whole group. Um, one, unfortunately, the guy who started the group, Chris, um, he's in prison. Okay. Um, um, and then uh, my my baby bro, um, Lavelle, the one who was in the casket. Yeah. Um, he and he's my writing partner. Um, unfortunately, he's incarcerated as well. We're trying oh. to work and trying to get him out right now. Trying to you know, it's, it's this new law in California where they kind of um, you know they got rid of three strikes. Yeah. But they got this SB. I can't think of the name of it. Where if you this is what we got to watch out. And this is the reason why I tell people you got to learn these laws learn the and laws. What we, you got to learn the laws and and stuff like that because even though we got rid of three strikes in California, they put a new law in that if you're an habitual and like say so what was going on is that you had all these no offense, white people, Caucasians, yeah. that were stealing bread, and all of a sudden they're getting life sentences. And they were like, this ain't right, this ain't right. But um, what happened is, when we go to prison or we do things, a lot of times we're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So if I got caught with a, a, dope, a dope charge, the next time I go in, if I get caught with another dope charge, mm -hmm. the third time I get caught with a dope charge, they're gonna say I'm not rehabilitable. Mm -hmm. they, so what they're going to do is they're going to lock me up, or they might put me into a mental institution, saying, "You know what? We can't really, um, we can't, you know, he, we, can, we can't get him back on the streets." Mm -hmm. And you're stuck there, and you're stuck in this legal system where they won't let you out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so one of my boys is going through that. One of my boys got a little depressed about the industry. Um, you know, and this was, and this is the reason why I'm trying to work on this a thing called Second Coming. It's a reality show, and um, you know, um, the industry is. You know, people talk about the Illuminati and stuff. I just call it Satan. I call it the devil. Exactly. Most definitely. You know, I, I just call it the devil. And I tell people, my boy got really depressed. Um, you know, when you're told you're owed $4 million and you ain't got a dime, you know, you'd be depressed too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you you know, you would, you would. And so he was like, I don't want to do music no more. So he got out. And then one partner, and I'm going to talk about you, my my boy, my cousin. He um he decided he didn't, he didn't want people to know he was part of the group. You know what I'm saying? He just... How many was in the? Uh, how many? Five of us. Five of you. I thought it was. So I'm only. I'm be honest with you. I'm the only one. But it was by the grace of God that I was able to sing every part. I'm the only one that actually can represent DRS right now. I'm trying to get my boy EJ back with me. I think if if that happens, man, I'm just. I'd be so blessed. Who said? Who songs? This song dedicated. And hey, you were going in, man. He's smooth. This song's dedicated to, to my, my homies. Yeah. And that gangster lean. Yeah, he come in smooth. Just Why, like. yeah. I'll be honest with you. I wanted this, after the two of them wanted to leave, I was like, well, shoot, we could be the next OJs. Mm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but how hard is it to keep a group together? Because it gotta be hard. You have it gotta all, be. Because you've seen groups come up over the years and they don't last. You rarely find a group that lasts. With boys to men? Rarely. But, but I'm going to tell you, let me tell you though. ABC. But I'm going to be honest with you. BBD. One thing that Boyz II Men, they taught me when I met them, and I hung around them. Um, <laughs> when they, they told me this, you know what made them successful? They were friends in, in school. Mm -hmm. But when they became professionals, they stopped being personal friends. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it became a business. They became business New partners. New addition. Same thing. Business partners. Mm -hmm. And what Same happened thing. is you have to separate that. You can't be, oh, that's my best friend no more. You, you're a business entity. And they looked at it like that. And that's how they've been able to survive. Mm -hmm. Because they don't, they're not like, because what happens is that if you don't do that, you your emotion, emotions get involved. See, but, but when they come to you and say you got a platinum album and, and you start growing and, and egos change too. Go, you well, start, and you start then your you members start the chart, tripping. Like where my money at? Well, it's and, a whole bunch and, going and, on. And, and it's not just that. <laughs> it's also like like with my group. Um, like I started being asked to come fly places and can you do some backgrounds? But you know, but send, sign this NDA so they don't know it's you. Mm. But we need your voice. We need to hear that. What? You know, we need to, oh, they try yeah. to separate you because so they know your is, voice and they and don't when want it happens, else. When your boys find out, like I'm on that Jason's Lyric soundtrack. You on the Jason Lyric soundtrack? Ain't jealous. no love That's you? in the heart of the city. A child is born through pain and sin. That's me. That's what, but, Boy, you go hard, but like I, that. <laughs> but what happened is but they I was mad. told, but see, this is what happened. That sounds uh, good. Ham, Ham was like, well, I'm going to have you go solo. He was going to have me and EJ go solo. And I was like, well, no, I don't think that's the right time. Right. Because, you know, when you form a group, I was like, no, we need to be together for a couple of years and establish that because, um, and how DRL, the, my, me being on that 
soundtrack happened, I was asked to do it. I was asked actually to do If You Think You're Lonely Now. Really? Because KC had opted out of it. And what happened is I went in the studio to record If You Think You're Lonely Now. And I think I was doing a good job. The engineer was like, man, you, you banging on this. But then I, I think KC must have heard I was in the studio. And they said, um, no offense, Deuce, but um, we're going to do this. We're not going to have you do that song, but we want you to write a song for and this is what we want you to use. So they gave me the elements of, of Ain't No Love. And they said, we want you to write. And so they showed me the copy of the movie and everything. And so I wrote to it. And then the whole nine got with me and me and uh, JB from DRS. And I told him, I said, I don't want to make it a solo song. Because I knew my boys, at the time, we started fighting. Right. And so I wanted us to you know, come together. So I said, we're going to do this as DRS together. It's not going to be a Lamar Deuce Lubin project. It'll be a DRS project. And that's what happened. Because at the time, EJ had, was like, I ain't singing no more. Because he was getting mad about the money part. So I actually had to trick him. So when you hear it, he's in the beginning of the, the ending of the song. I actually tricked him mm. and told him, hey, come on. Because he moved to Sacramento. I was still in the Bay. And we were recording. I said, hey, uh, I was like, EJ, come on down real quick. Let's kick it. And I took him to the studio and I played. we played the track. And we was like, don't you think? I said, it'd be so tight if you did this on this song. And he got he in there. <laughs> he got in there and he sang it. And he was like, oh, dude, she talked me into it. So he, he did it. He, so what did he do? He sang the ending part of um, Ain't, no, Ain't love. no Love. And so um, we put that on the um, Jason's lyric soundtrack. And then, you know, we're part of that You Will Know song. Your dreams ain't easy. Just stick by your plan. Go from boys to men. So we did that, mm -hmm. and so, um, so I was, I was, there was some hope. I was thinking, oh, we were about to, because there was only three of us left, and I just knew. And then, you know, my boy uh, JB got caught up and uh, went to prison. I went to jail, and he got, he got a charge. Um, and kind of, you know, what I'm saying, when your boy goes away. It kind of put a damper, yeah. and then but you don't have the didn't money. Didn't they used to parallel y'all with like boys and men, like like like? Well, because you know, like like y'all came out during the same look. The well, no, they, no, they were before us. They though. were before you, but still, y'all was a group. Yeah, we were a group, but they well, they were looking at us like because what happened is that when our album came out, um, we had some songs like I did. I did this song called "Scoundrels Get Lonely" too. We had some songs like "Nigga with a Badge." Stuff like that, like Chris really wanted it to be like, oh, it's going to be scandalous and people are going to come. But it kind of backfired on us because, you know, they were like, y'all gangsters and y'all singing about nigga with a badge, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And um, and then we tried to do Do Me Baby over. Did Princess you? Do Me Baby. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, I'm I not mean, proud well, of that. Y'all didn't try to go <laughs> high, high <laughs> pitch. No, just, here we, you know, we, it was like, it, it, it's kind of corny. It's just really hit it here. different. Don't hold back. Just hit it. Oh, y'all trying to change Don't it. Don't go back. Just hit it here. <laughs> Don't go back. I got you. Here we are in this little old room. <laughs> Lanny Chevy down. Who came up with you? You me to With see. Ian, huh? <laughs> and the funny part, like, I gotta tell you this. So I so um when we when we did the album release, we were at we were at the Sahara in uh, Vegas. Okay. And so um I'm walking around and people are like, you know, I ain't gonna lie, no I'm not bragging on myself, but people start calling me the voice. Yeah. They start saying, Man, you the man with the voice. Yeah. And they start saying, You the you the you know, and um and we have an iconic picture, which is kind of funny where I'm in the middle. I don't know if you ever seen the poster. And there's the guy who took it, um, he told me the reason he this is so funny. This is how this is how groups do. He said, Deuce, I want this to be the picture because you are like the you're like the Teddy Pentagrass of the group to me. And he said, I think you're gonna break out one day. He said, So um I'm going to suggest that you pick this picture, but the picture, the other, there's two pictures. But <laughs> he goes, but trust, he goes, trust me, your boys don't like you. He says, so if you pick this picture, they're all going to pick this picture. So I said, okay, I'll try it. So I went and picked this picture, and my boys was like, ah, we don't like it. We want this one. And then once it came out, they was like, oh, this nigga in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even get it. Very psychology. Because, you know, but that's what happens in group. And then what happens is, it's like, when you start getting uh, star magazine, the magazines start coming, then they start asking, oh, we want this member to talk. So I would get asked sometimes to talk because they want to talk to me and say, hey, who's your, who you like? Who, who you know, who, like, who are your influences? Man, and jealousy stuff. is something else. That's creating gaps. Oh, man. Especially in groups. And oh, they purposely oh, do that because sometimes they want to break you. They want you as a solo artist. They're preparing you. They already planned all of that. They love your voice. <laughs> they want you over here. So once the group sign, um, breaks up, they can sign you over here. But then you also have those people who don't want you by yourself. They want the whole group. So well, it goes well, both ways. Well, that's well. I'll be honest with you. When we signed, 
we went, so we went down to an audition in front of Hammer because we were like, okay, Hammer wants us to come down. So we had a van come. We got in there. This we, was before the album. This, 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 this was before the photo. Hammer, here come the Hammer. All that. That was going on during this time. Yeah. And, yeah. and he was that with the pants and everything. Yeah, but this is when he oh, had yeah, hits. But, but remember, this is when he started getting the flack because he bought the helicopter for Oakland PD <laughs> and he bought the battle ram and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. So he had to change his image. And and when what was sad was that all the stuff that Hammer tried to prevent, like the image, all the rappers do now. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's funny, like he was the architect for all that, all that product. And I mean, think about it. I got toothpaste, hammer time. I have a hammer time toothpaste. I have a hammer time game. You know what I'm saying? He, he had did everything. that. He did that before everyone else. And what happened with black people is that he, they mocked him and talked about him, and didn't understand that because um, a lot of people don't know this. Hammer at one time was one of the largest black talent agents. He had Salt and Pepper. He had mm. Heavy D. He had Ralph Tresman. He had I'm um, thinking about it, three five seven. He had, he had Special all of Generation. Those? He had think about it, um, Uncle whatever. He had all those groups, and they were under his management. Him mm. and his brother Louis Burrell. They were all under his management. We had tons. I mean, I mean, a lot of people don't know this, but Ralph used to live in Fremont, California. When he did his albums, he was under us as well. A lot of people don't know that. That you know, Hammer. Hammer really. Y'all the one broke up New Edition. No. Yeah, let's just be real no, about new it. New edition uh, broke up. Uh, new edition. Yeah. <laughs> Why is Ralph over no, there? Man. You didn't say Mike, Ronnie, Bobby, and Ricky was over there. You say Ralph, Ralph. was over there, yeah. and that makes me understand that Ralph had disconnected for some kind of reason. Yeah, he was over here talking about other things. Well, you know what? And I like that the story kind of told his story. Yeah, I seen because, that because I'll be honest with you. Oh, he was, was he lying? I, I, remember, on there? I remember when Ralph lived in Fremont with his wife, and I remember him coming down to the studio playing uh, Sensitivity. I remember when he first. They all was came bad. Out. That was too much talent in one group. That's why they was tripping. Well, you know what? I, no, but I'm, I'm gonna tell you what happened with my group. My group got to the point where um, it was it, it was it was even hard to take pictures for magazines because everybody wanted a position. I'm over here. I want to be over here. I want to do this. And, and a lot of pictures you'll see that I'm kind of in the back or I'm turned away because we're moving. Because they always tell you, "Oh, move, yeah, I move this way," and I always got pushed. I always got pushed to like make sure this nigga don't get to the front. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and they and they might say, "Oh, Deuce, that's not true," but that is true. And then you know, and um, and and so it got to the point where people really start tripping about the money, like who's getting extra money, uh, who's getting extra perks. Um, I'll be honest with you, there was a group that Madonna had. I think uh, my people YMV, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and so um, some people are gonna say, "Oh, well, Deuce is the reason why the group broke up." I am not the reason the group broke up. Let's get it straight. I'm not, but I will tell you what did happen. I mean, I mean and I'm, this is on working on my reality to let people know what's really going on. I um, I met a guy from uh, the group IMV. Uh, we were in Savannah, Georgia, doing a show, and he comes up to me, and you know, and this is the reason why I believe that we need to really teach the youngsters about business. Don't just get in the game and just get in the game. Mm -hmm. Take a course, learn about business, because it's business. Exactly. I mean, we have talent, but it's also business. To them, they see the dollars, cha-ching, cha-ching. And he said to me, what's in your writer? And I said, writer? What the hell's a writer? <laughs> now, I got the number one song in the country right now, and I don't know what a writer is. And he goes like, what do you want in your backstage? Like, do you have M&Ms? Do you have, you know, candy bars? Or, you know, like, what do you want them to do? And I said, I don't know, whatever they put back there. He goes, I mean, he goes, well, do you want your money up front or do you come and, you know, like get money now and you get the rest of the money sure, when you get there? give me my money up front. And I was like, well, I don't take care of that. Man, the office does that. And he's like, what? You let the office do that for you? And he, let me, and I've always been blessed in my, God's always brought people in my life. Hey, man. All, I'll be honest with you. Listen, See, man. He and, do, and, won't and he do I'm going to tell you this one, one thing. Um, what happened is that he took me to um, Tower Books and bought me this book called All This All, All You Need to Know About the uh, Music Business and the one that Kashif All About the Music Business by Kashif mm -hmm. and Donald Passman the All About the Music Business and he said look take these two books and I want you to start reading them and I started reading them by the time I got to Omaha, Nebraska, I was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm getting screwed oh, over. Yeah, oh my God. Still alive. And so I knew that nobody could mimic me. No one could do my parts. And so I told Hammer one night, I was in the hotel. I said, I ain't going on stage. Mm. And he said, no, 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 you got to go. What do you mean you ain't going on stage? I'm not going on stage. I said, I got asthma. I ain't got no health care. I could die. I'm in the great. I know. I say I'm in the Great Plains. You know, I got asthma. I got grass all over the place. If I get sick, who gonna take care of me? I ain't got. You know what I'm saying? I have nothing to fall back on. I said I'm not going. 
And he was like, Deuce, Deuce, just, that's all right. Deuce, Deuce, just, just, just go on stage. Just, just do this joke. And when you get back, we're going to talk. We're going to talk. You always do that. We're going to talk. And so um, at that point, I realized that I had, I was like, dang, you know, I got this talent. I'm doing this. And I'm, and, and I said, it, people don't understand what it's like to go to a hotel and to be number one in the country and you have fans want your autograph and you can't buy yourself a drink. Wow. You know, you can't even get yourself, you know, that's a drink. heavy, man. And you know what I'm saying? Everybody wants your autograph and you can't even buy yourself a drink. You can't even buy yourself a man. And that's when you look at and say, dang, like, what's really up? And one thing I tell people is that, for some reason, black people always want to screw you well, with no it Vaseline. Again. But at least, and like I just, this is my joke. At least the Jews might screw you, but they give you some Vaseline so it won't hurt so much. Boy, what you, you talking? You know what I'm saying? At least a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Just a little bit. And so, um, this. Let me go back to this though. I'm listening. When I so when we auditioned for Hammer, I wanted to be like Ice Cube. Mm. I wanted to be the member that didn't sign, but I'm gonna help y'all with whatever y'all want to. Right. And when Hammer saw and we sang. He told the group, if he doesn't come with you, I don't want the group. Right. So my boys came to me and he took us out to eat and gave us a hundred bucks a piece back then. You know, he's like, ooh, a hundred dollars. That gave us a bill. That boy gave us a bill. A little face. Everybody gave a hundred dollars, bought us some tennis shoes. We was like, ooh. <laughs> it's on. We got us some tennis shoes so too. we got to go eat. And we, I remember, and I remember telling my boys, I will sign only if you guys say we're going to be like brothers and we're going to work together mm -hmm. and be like a family. And of course... They was hungry. Yeah, we gonna do that. Well, I swear, we we one for one, we we together, and I signed. And I'm gonna tell you the reason why I'm talking about favor. My mother told me when I went to the meeting, if the Holy Spirit tells you, do not sign, don't sign. When I got back, I ain't gonna lie, the Holy Spirit told me not to sign. I went against the Holy Spirit, and I signed because I was like, well, God, this is this is, these boys have been doing this for so many years. Who am I not to give them their dream if I need to sign? And when I got home, when I opened the door, and my mother saw my face, my mother said, you signed. And my mother said, let's pray right now. She called my grandma and said, we're going to pray. And I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, we prayed. And I think, and I tell my mother this day, I think it's the prayers that really mm -hmm. got me through because I could be in prison right now. Mm. I've done stuff when I was a kid that, I ain't going to lie, I, it's just by the grace of God that I'm still here. Mm -hmm. doing my thing, you know, because I, I, don't, I don't have to be here. And I can tell people, you know, people, highfalutin black people, always, oh, you know, I lived my life, I went to college, I did this and that. But we don't understand as black people that it takes one one car, one tail light to go out, mm -hmm. one something for you to be stopped by a police officer, um, for them to plant something on you, to do anything, and you in there for life. I got homies that, that really didn't do the crime, but they was in the car. And because they got caught with the people they're in the car, they're doing life sentences. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But they didn't do nothing. They just said, hey, let me get in the car and jump in the car. And that's what happened with my last uh, homie from DRS. He jumped in the car with somebody um, and uh, he was on parole and they was on parole. And he didn't really know. And when, he, when they drove out the parking lot, police was 10 cop cars there. Let, so. me, let, let me ask you this. Um, you didn't ever deal with Ice Cube. I see you mentioned him a while ago. No, we went on tour with Ice Cube. You did? Yeah, I don't think Ice Cube liked my group so much. What, I think he what, was cool why? with me. Well, you know. It was rowdy, wasn't it? Well, yeah, no, 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 no. There's something going on. No, no. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> you know what? When I met Ice Cube and I kicked it with Ice Cube, I'm going to be honest with you. Very intelligent. Um, I This is a true story. You can get mad at me telling it, but I'm going to tell you. Mm. I was on tour. And so, you know, we was thinking, oh, Ice Cube, you know, you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's it. So we went and got some 40s and got some weed. And we was like, okay, we're going to go back to the hotel and kick it in. We walked in there. And with a Cube, where the hoes at? He's like, shh. My wife is in the other room. <laughs> I was like, you married? You know what I'm saying? I was like, I didn't know he was married. And I said, hey. And he goes, he goes, hey, he's a 40. He goes, uh, nigga, give me some Wadea. And I said, Wadea? I said, what's some Wadea? And he's like, they was laughing. Water, nigga. I'm drinking water. But, you know, because I was thinking, oh, he going to be back there smoking blunts. He's drinking 40s. He's doing all that. But then I realized that it's a smart brother. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He knows his audience. He knows what he's doing. He know he can't be lit all night long and make sure he watching everything and stuff like that. I mean, and some people are going to get mad at me saying this, but think about this. The number one person that owns the number one family entertainment company, family entertainment, is owned by Ice Cube. Mm. Wow. Think about that. Think about that. He Say that again. The number one family, family entertainment, entertainment company as far as 
the movies, all of that stuff, family orientated. What's the name of that company? Um, I can't think of his name. Is, but you know, all the movies that he do, all those, those are all for, you know, um, are we there yet? All that right. stuff. Yeah. Those are all family oriented right. things from the number one gangster in America. Think about it. Think about that. Think about that. The brother yeah. came up. He the did brother, a good job. The brother did, he did a good. He we did, interviewed the his, brother came up. his uh his his uh guitarist. guitarist, the guy to make do a lot of his production of Clint bass pay, player Clint Payback Sands, mm-hmm. man, good guy. You know him? You ever heard, I heard of, of him? Yeah, Clint. Yeah. He's out of uh out of L.A. Mm-hmm. But but, but I'm just saying. It. But I'm just saying. But but and so that's what I'm saying. So we have a lot of perceptions sometimes, and they're wrong. You know what I'm saying? We, yeah. we, we 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 come up to the artists and we think, oh, this is how they live and this is what they're it's doing, not. and it's really ain't. You know, I I, I tell, uh, you know, I I really sad when um when um um uh, what's it called it uh, passed away. Um, oh, I can't think right now. Um, in L.A., you know, my boy. Um, um, Which one? Nipsey, 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 Nipsey also. That really hurt my heart when Nipsey did because Nipsey really was trying to do something for the community, and um and and you know and it, and it's sad that when you get brothers like you. I'm pretty sure you got haters. Well, you got to realize, you got to realize, Aramis, we went by his store uh, because of this store. Think about it. I went and met his father, his, his brother, me and my wife would go by there when I would go. I went when nobody wasn't going because we do the same thing. Look, if you think about it, it makes sense. So when I would go to LA, I would go straight by there. If I'm in Miami, I'm in Purple Carpet, wherever there's a family owned business where you got the, my sons there, both of my sons are now. But it's like uh, you got the, you know, this store, you know, and so I was like, man, we got to go say, hey, keep going, brother. Yeah. You know, because nobody's really doing stuff for the community like that. It's very, you would be surprised and amazed at how few there are of us. It ain't many. Everybody doing their thing and they don't care about building up the community like that. So, so that was dear to me. So, yeah, Nipsey and I met him in the Palms in Vegas. He's a, he was a dope guy. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, so when you, uh, Oh, cube vision is what it's called. It's called cube vision. Cube vision. Yes. Yeah. 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 Cube vision. Headquartered in Santa Monica, California. Yeah. Yeah. Motion pictures, television. Right. Ride, ride along. Ride yeah. along one and two. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. This old boy. Hey, it, I'm telling you, man, we got to give kudos and flowers to our guys while they're here so we can give them flowers. Now, most of the time I hate this new stigma with Dolph just dying. I hate this oh, new man. stigma where, it seems like it's almost the norm for people to act a certain way the day after someone passes on the internet, they posting and they got, it's a whole algorithm that goes on and it's became a thing where I believe it's almost like staged people loving views and people loving to get those comments and people loving to I got pictures with him. Yeah. And all that. And, and and it's not, and, and, and and then it dies out within a couple of weeks, maybe a month and it's on waiting on the next one to happen. It, It seemed that way. Maybe I'm tripping. No, I agree with you. I, it, well, you know what? And it just it's kind of it's kind of sad that. And this is what I, I tell people sometimes when I sing Gangsta Land. It's sad that even though I'm for me I'm happy I'm able to sing it and people still love it. But it's sad that the 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 history of it is is the same. Twenty five years later, the harsh reality. We're still doing the same thing. Same thing. You know, um, and and tell and telling you and how it came about. Um, we have a our boy YB had uh, was killed. And his mom came to us and said, hey, I know you guys sing. Can you sing It's Hard to Say Goodbye? And so we were practicing it. And I remember Chris said, this nigga wouldn't want to, us to sing this at his funeral because he was a street nigga. And he said, we need to make a song about our homies. What's going on today? And that's basically how Gangsta Lean started. And we were like, yeah, let's make a song that talks about our generation, our homies. Because at the time, in the 90s, 92, 93, think about it, a lot of killings. A lot, mm-hmm. of, we lost a, a lot of people don't know that we lost a whole generation of people that should be here right now. Just based on just based on just us hating on each other and, and claiming territory that we don't even own and you know what I'm saying? And and killing each other. I you know, for, for silly for silly you know, this is the truth where I tell people. Back in the day you could get killed being at a concert, stepping on somebody's toes. Mm-hmm. Hey nigga, what you doing? You stepped on my toes. That's you didn't right. Say, you didn't say excuse That's me. That's right. Now we old enough where we say it's okay. I gotta go to work tomorrow. I got a mortgage to pay. You know what I'm <laughs> I got so, kids. So I how did you, how did you go to that place where you? My God, my God! How did you go there when you know, like in that song? How did I, you? You see what I'm saying? That's a different place. Like the whole song, the tempo was something else. And I just want to know how you how how did you dig and find that place in in that verse? I had a cousin um, named Amir Amir Wakili Howard, and he had kind of when we were. You know, we were broke when we was trying to come up. 
And my cousin, uh, he worked for Safeway. He used to do the bottling, you know, the recycling. And we would come down to Oakland to record with the whole nine. And he, people would sometimes just leave in bottles. And my cousin would, um, when he got the leftovers, he would he would just pile up and he would cash it in. And instead of keeping it for himself, he would actually, even though he was my cousin, he would pass it out to all the members in the group. Mm-hmm. Like when we come, because we stay in his house, you know, and he would say, here's 20 for you, here's 20, y'all go eat and do all that kind of stuff. And when I got signed, when I decided to sign, um, I knew I was gonna be in the Bay because Sac- we was in Sacramento at the time. And I called him and I said, hey, I'm gonna be in the Bay with you. And we was like, oh man, we're gonna, and we was like, oh man, we're gonna have a mirror with us. And, and uh, oh man, we're gonna, you know, be able to kick it with a mirror and do all that. And the weekend before I, I got to go to Ham's and start recording, um, there's a thing called siding in the Bay Area that they do. Where, you know, they rev the car up. And oh, he had okay. just had a dream about dying. He had, his father had passed and he had bought a, a DeLorean. And he said it was too fast for him. He had dreamed that he was going to die. So he went and bought a Trans Am. And he got scared of that. So he decided that night to go out with his homies and let them drive. And his homie had a Mustang and, you know, the drop. And he was in it. He was in the back seat. And he told his boy, hey, they started siding. He said, hey, if you're going to do this, let me, out. let me out. And he started to try to get out. And his homie said, oh, Negro, Sam. And he revved the car up. And my cousin flew out like a projectile, and his head snapped on a, a light pole. And when his homie saw that, he got nervous, and the car just started spinning, spinning, and crashed, and um, killed the other guy as well in the back. And then the guy in the front seat, uh, the passenger, he became paralyzed, and the driver... Nothing. Nothing. And, and that's how, so, that's so how when, you went So there. when I got there to sing the song, I'll be honest with you, at first it was like, my God, my God. And then I remember Chris and them came in and they said, um, you're not singing it the way you need to. About to make me cry a little bit. Um, um, he was saying, um, right. um, think about a mirror. And um, when I got there, I started singing it. And I kind of was mad. And so when you hear that, my God, I was kind of mad at God. I was like, yeah. why would you do this to me? You know what I'm saying? So wow. that's why you hear that. Yeah, yeah, I, I could feel it was um, something there, man. It just, yeah. it, 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 that's heavy because, like I said, it not only it was needed for the time because it was a place where a lot of people was at. And then so, I had something, then my homie YB was gone. Yeah. And, and people then, had to feel that. People had to feel that through your music to resonate with it. Yeah, and you then I started I mean? thinking about all these homies. And then when I got in there and we started singing, we started thinking about all these homies that we exactly. had that were passed away over some silly shit. Like, you know, stepping on the toe, you know, uh, a nigga you in my territory, uh, Chris Holloway, who we call him Hard Rock. All, you know, um, just silly stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, um, just, you know, when you're young, you black, um, you really don't have no guidance, um, there's nobody there to really tell you, hey, you don't need to do this. You need to stop. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, luckily I have a, a brother who, you know, he was a crib, and he kind of, he told me when I was younger, you different. You, this ain't your life. Definitely, definitely. This, I mean, I, one time I did a beer run and my brother found out. <laughs> I was, I'm proud. Like, ah, I drove my car, we drove. You know the beer run? We yeah. grabbed, grabbed the beers and came back. And my brother was like, oh, you did this? He said, oh, really? He goes, yeah, yeah, oh, your little brother did this. He did this and that. He said, where the beer at? And I was like, right here. And my brother took every single beer bottle that I had and smashed it on the ground. Mm. And he said, that's for them niggas to do. Nigga, you going to college. You're going to be something. That's, that's, that's good. That's a good brother. And, and when he and you know what, and I do thank him for that because I had one day I had to just sit down and say, I thank you for that. I thank you for going in the refrigerator and saying, Hey, and when I'm in when I'm in the hood, like when he went to prison, and he was opening up the refrigerator, opening, and he was like, it was like I was like, What are you doing? He goes, I want to see if the light closes. And he says, When you locked up, you don't have that. You no, can't you just don't get have that luxury. You can't you can't get up in the middle of the night and just walk. And he goes, Yo, no. and at the time I was chubby when I was a kid. He said, Your fat ass wouldn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like sardines, you know what I'm saying, yeah. and, and stuff like that. And so I learned a lot from him. But growing up, when people were telling you all these positive things that you weren't, that your life had more than just this to it, did you believe them? Did you, did you um, listen to them? Because you know when your kids and older people or anybody is telling you these things, you're like, whatever. I ain't gonna lie. I think as a black male, um, I still think that. I'm gonna be real with you. 
I still, I, um, sometimes when people come up to me and say, hey man, you a legend, you do this and that, like I told you earlier, I'm like, I'm just Lamar, I'm just do this. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't, you don't really look back, and I've had to learn now that you, um, and I just recently learned this, a couple of years ago, when people give you praise and stuff, you can't, you can't knock them, you can't negate them. You have to take it and say thank take you. Take it, right. You have to say thank you, because you, because what's happening is that you're blocking your blessings and exactly. you're blocking their blessings. If they want to bless you, you got to say, okay, you got to reciprocate and say, and I think with our people, we're so, you know what I'm saying? We're so like, oh, I'm, I'm cool. I'm, I'm, I don't need, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be weak. I don't want to look like I'm weak. I'm, I'm cool and all that. And we need to drop that. That's why I ate that food this morning because I used to would be that guy that wouldn't, wouldn't take from nobody. Yeah. There's certain things you have to let your guards down on and say, man, I'm blessing you to invite you into my world to say, okay, I'm going to eat this because you brought it, because that says something. And I don't want to block your blessing because yeah, you're blessing yeah, cause me. Yeah, appre- because you're blessing you're us. You, we appreciate it. Exactly. But, but, that's, but that's how we got to teach our people now. Yeah. We need to learn. You know, it needs, And one thing I have to say about when I was going back to East Palo Alto, one thing we did used to do is we used to have an annual picnic. And we would have it was for the whole town, and uh, I remember Mama Easley. She would she would get the food like the the meats and stuff. And say everybody bring side dishes, and we would um and what we would do, the whole town would come through. You know what I'm saying? You, and you, and and you have mothers, a lot of single mothers, bring plates, bring uh, Tupperware, and they'd have food for the whole week. I mean, growing up in a single, I remember my mom would call her girlfriends, and this is what they do. My mom would say, Patty, you got some biscuit. You know, uh, she said, yeah, but I ain't got no milk. I got milk. Um, who got some eggs? Uh, Kendrick's mom would say, oh, I got eggs. And they would actually, we would walk to each other's houses with the stuff. And mm-hmm. one mother, one mother would actually cook a whole, would cook a whole meal for, for us. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of, that's what we need now. But, I know, I'm even, just but even going back to that um, about appreciating a gift or when somebody give you a compliment, because like for me personally growing up, I was that person who would tell anybody, thank you. You tell me something nice, I tell you thank you. But I don't mean that I believed in what you're saying, even if it's a compliment, compliment to myself. I'd be like, yeah, thank you. But uh, so it was just words. I mean? it was my just my words. auntie said that. My auntie said, my right. auntie one time said, you know, I always tell people I'm sorry, but I really don't mean it. And it's, I just I just learned to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> to get past no but even like when somebody say um, you're talented you know and you're like and you're like yeah uh, you know it's like in yourself you're like I know that I'm alright but I'm not just like you say you didn't know you could sing as well as everybody loved you to well, sing well because I was brought I'm being honest with you my mother always taught my mother always thought well I don't want him she goes well I never really wanted to tell you you was that good because I didn't want you to get hurt I didn't want you to blow your head up and then you go out there. Can we try to keep our kids humble? Because I'll tell my daughter, I say, you got to learn how to stay humble. I don't want to always tell you, just the same thing that your mom was saying, you are a great person. You are a smart person, but always stay humble. I don't want you to get a big head. But if you notice, the ones that the parents that don't have talent and they say, my baby's the greatest, are the ones that make it. <laughs> if you notice that, and they have, they have so much, I've met some people in Hollywood that have no talent at all, but have so much confidence that we are, they're on reality shows now. Mm-hmm. No offense to them, but, <laughs> but uh, you know what I'm saying? They, and, they, and, and they've gone because they have been taught to have that, to have that, um, I can do this, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm, I'm good. And I'll be honest with you, you gotta be kinda crazy or schizophrenic or bipolar to be in the industry and to actually get on stage and think your shit don't stink and other people need to listen to you. I don't care what nobody say. Hollywood gets mad because I say that. And I say, <laughs> I say everybody in Hollywood is either bipolar or schizophrenic. Or you got some deficiency. Some most going most on. successful people are, look at Kanye. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all talk about Kanye, but I'm not gonna do, let you go there on my boy. That's my guy. That's your guy. Oh my goodness, but man. He you is, know, you he know, is very shout talented. Out, shout out to Kanye, who, who, uh, yeah, he's. Kanye, he's come get your boy. Lot, lot I know y'all right did try now. a little tenderness. Yeah, that's my you guy. You need to man. have me on the track next <laughs> time. You know what? I mean, that's my song, Kanye. <laughs> oh, she may be weary. Young girls do get weary. Wearing that same old shaggy dress. Oh, oh. while she's there waiting, anticipating, try a little tenderness. Come on, get Boy, me. Boy, you ready, man? <laughs> but did you read that about Kanye the other day? I know that he broke up, um, divorced with his wife, um, Kim. They ain't divorced yet, I don't think. Or, I it's it's, it's on the way. It's on the way. way. 
He don't want a divorce now. That, that, I saw that. That's what I was saying. He said he that God said God said that he That's needs to wife. save because he needs to set an example for all these people who are listening. watching him. Because whenever he was going through this, some people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he wants to show people that there is reconciliation there you go after a problem and that's what uh, what a friend we well, have know, in wait, Jesus well you know wait, well, yeah, he, and he did our, our, I yeah. heard he won that gospel AMA yeah. award so maybe maybe God is like I'm talking to you no but, but a, I love that I love because when I was reading it I was like you know I'm like that's awesome like if he goes through all of this and I pray that they do get back together you know and do this because a lot of people do watch them and all people do idolize them, and it could save a lot of other people. Let me be honest with you. So many times we we always count people out too early, guys. God is working on each and every one of us, mm -hmm. and, and, and we're all a work in progress, and we're evolving all the time. But a lot of times, because of the bumps in the road, we, all, all the potholes we hit in life, we drop people off at that pothole, and I think that's the worst. Well, thing. I'm gonna be honest with you. The reason why I want to do my reality shows because I'm very controversial. I've been, I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna be honest with you. Some people are like, I've seen you here. I've done everything there is on this side, <laughs> and I ain't ashamed of it. I've, I've done some things that I'm proud of. I've done some things I ain't proud of. You know, I've been a part of different communities. But you're standing, but you're standing in it. Oh yeah, yeah. But my thing is, I tell people, but you know what? Um, but those are the choices I decide to make. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the only one that has to go to God at the end and say, hey, this is why I did it. This is how I did it. This is why I did it. And um, my thing is, I've learned now that I gotta live my life. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and my mom says I have the Peter Pan syndrome. You know, oh, you always wanna be young, you always wanna do this, wanna go here and go there. But like I told him, when I die, everyone keeps telling me, oh, it's like a real, like a movie. I don't want to go through my life going back, going, oh, what was me? I wish you would have did this. I want to, I want my Say life Say you to, did everything I you I want to go like, God, thank you for my life. Thank you for me being here. Thank you for the opportunity that you've given me. And I, I tell people that, you know, no matter what you do in life, I don't care, I don't care your orientation, sex, you know, that's why I want to do the show. The show is, called Second Coming. It's about people in the industry or if you own a business like you guys and you fell off either due to drugs, sexuality, you know, um, bad contracts. I want to see what what was the reason why you fell off and what do you want to do now? Do you want to come back? Is it done? Was it a fluke? You know, because some people in the industry because they would just happen to be somewhere. A lot of people, because right now, you know, where where are where are they now? Yes. Type of thing. And a lot of people do wonder because there are many groups or actors, actresses, like, man, I used to love watching this person. What happened to them? You know, it's the first thing people think about, are they working in a grocery store or something? You know, where are they? I ain't going to lie. I, look, I ran a grocery store for eight years. I was assistant assistant manager, and I and I remember one time um, Faith came in because she used to live in the neighborhood I did, and I remember Faith was like, "What you doing?" <laughs> and I said, "I gotta work. I need wow. to I need to make some money." You know what I'm saying? I I remember when um, and that's real when um, they tried. Now let me tell you, this is how this is how real I am. When when it first broke out about Hammer and the money mm -hmm. and situation, I what happened is I was in Hollywood. I was living in L.A. and I needed money. And even though my, my song was on the chart and I was doing these background and I was getting this and that, I went and got a job with UPS. Mm. And I went to Capitol in my UPS outfit. And I remember, um, and it's in Sister Sister Magazine, um, one of the execs said, uh, is this a Halloween costume? <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> and I said, and he, they put my quote, I said, no, nah, I gotta eat. Mm. And like, but you got a song that's number one right now. And I said, hey. They ain't paying the bills. They ain't paying the bills. I gotta, mm -hmm. I gotta work. And that's what I want people to know. What it's really like. What's, what's, what's you know, like, um, so it's like I tell people, do you want the fame? Do you want the money? What are you in it for? But it's so many different young people, especially the rappers that are coming up. And it's because of people like you, because of the things that you guys have laid out in the history of what we, see, some drove us to where we're at now. So um, a lot of these kids not making money right now. A lot of these kids just putting up videos. It's easy to put up a video. It's easy to, you know, uh, a, a million uh, streams is only four thousand dollars. That's all it equates to. Well, and that's the reason why they got. The, that's the reason why they learn. Now that I'm saying Hammer did all this before. Think about it. Hammer was doing all that merchandising before. A lot of rappers and stuff merchandise. I was trying to get my shirts out here, my buttons, you know, because that's how you, you make your money it. now. You gotta, you gotta do it. You, you, you're, you gotta your do it. You're a business. You might have. I mean. So, the comedians I mean, got it. They do. Oh it. yeah, they do. But the thing is, um, and I gotta give a shout out to my girl Hope Floods if she's watching. I don't know if you heard of her, the Hope Flood. Mm -hmm. She does a comedian. She does a, a comics rock convention every year, and um, she has a thing called High Hopes, which is edibles. 
um, and stuff like that. <laughs> so that's my other little gig I do with her. Hey. I, I, I help sell her edibles sometimes. So if you need some edibles, y'all. <laughs> hey, hey. I, I brought some. Uh, you, know, you, know, <laughs> you know, I got like ten left. So you know, say fifteen dollars. But you know, what I'm saying I do. I, you know, but I'm be honest with you. People gonna tell you, Deuce is a hustler. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I do Always. everything. You know, I feed the homeless. I uh, do a thing <laughs> called feeding in motion with my auntie in L.A. Where we get the food boxes and we, so we do that. You do know the L.A. culture. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've been in yeah. LA for twenty one years. Now. So uh, when you hear Charleston White, because he's one of my frequent guys on my show, uh, uh, when you hear him speak on the things that he's seen in LA for the three years he was out there, and uh, <laughs> you know uh, he was out there for three years, he went and looked. You can't, and you can't be. He, in, he researched he, it for three years, and he found no some things out there that he has exposed in Texas, and he told Texas people, "Do not try to be like those people. That's not our culture." Stay the hell away from that gang stuff. That's they stuff. Well, okay, you have to, but you have to understand that when you say something like that, you have to understand that, like we're like Melvin and all them, Atre gangsters, uh, rolling the sixties. You have to understand that even though that is an LA culture, um, and it started, you know, when it came the LA culture, you have to understand that um, once the gangster rap came out, once us, you know, you have to understand that it didn't just go; it went all over the world. I mean, I was in Japan. I was in Japan in the '90s, like almost 2000s, and they had people in Japan that were dressing up in Pendleton's and were looking like D- were, were dressing like DRS. They had Pendleton's on. They had they had the sag. They had the afros on. They, they were Japanese and they were putting blackface on. You know what I'm saying? So you have to understand that it's not just LA. It's all over. And um, I think what to me what went wrong with the gangs is that. Um, I don't think they realized how much power they really had, how much the community they really had, because they start turning on each other. And I think that if they would have kind of been a common bond, you know what I'm saying? That could have been a shoot. You know what kind of corporation that could have been? Yeah, think about I, it. I definitely know what. It I mean, that could, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, I mean, we looked. I'll be honest with you. I mean, that's what got me, got me looking up to my brothers, looking up to those people, 29th Street um, in Sacramento, um, looking up to them. That's what um, those were our fathers. But when you those think were, about it, think about it. Those those OGs were those were, those were the those were our examples in the neighborhood. Now, whether you say it was good or bad, that's the only examples we but, had. But, but, and that's but, who we aspire to be like. says that uh, these gang members would kill people in these communities, and and then the, the, the gangsters that was surrounding them would hide them after people with kids or mothers would get killed. He says that they would hide each other and look out for each other when they know that this was stuff that was affecting and hurting our community. Okay, so let me ask you this. What's what's the difference? Okay, so you know about the Costa Nostra? No. That's the Italian mafia. So so think about this. When you watch them, they killed, they killed all day long. Yeah, but that, they, doesn't they make, had, that doesn't make it right. It doesn't, no, it doesn't. No, I'm not saying that that was right. But I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? Because the gangs, they're like a, they're like a family. They were like brothers. You know what I'm saying? Like a brotherhood. Because think about it. We didn't come, a lot of us didn't come up with these true family. Like, you know, like like um like now you learn, like you looked at the Brady Bunch. Now you find out none of them motherfuckers knew each other. They all come from single families. Shit, the mama was fucking the kids and shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, uh, the media makes you look, oh, look, the Brady Bunch, the Cosby family, you know, it was like, oh, this is the kind of family I want. And in reality, nobody had that. Nobody had nobody, nobody's cut and dry. Um, we make mistakes. Um not everything is going to be right. Um, now he's now now he's talking about well, don't do what LA do, but y'all got your own stuff that y'all do out we here. Have our own thing. You have your own thing. You have your own killings and stuff that you do out here. I mean, you know, y'all go to. Uh, I remember Zini was in yeah, Oklahoma. You remember the, 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 Zini the got killed was, in the club. Well, the that, guy like was Billy. killed. Mo three was killed uh, last year on uh, I thirty five at eleven fifty five during the. Oh, day. is that? Oh, that's when he shot him on. The, but I mean, I don't think that was gang related. No, that was just some people that didn't that didn't, didn't like each other. So, so you can't just blame it on L.A. You have to understand that that is our culture now. That is what we've been doing. We've been hating on each other, no matter if you're in a gang or you're not in a gang. But and where does like it stop? You. Where's the resolution? How how can we as older men try to do something to penetrate that culture in a positive way to where we can say we was wrong for doing that? If well, we're not doing well, you're that, right. if well, you're we're right. not doing that, but that's you gotta, a problem. You got to do like I did. You have to like I did in that document. 
apologize. All right. You got to apologize to the youth and say, you know what? I apologize for letting y'all think that this is the way of life that you should have lived. That you should walk around every day with the braids and smoking smoking uh, joints all day long and that kind of stuff. You, you know what I'm saying? We have to apologize to those people. Oh, stop. Now, you know, no, 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 keep we going. We have to apologize to them and let them know. It's, I mean, I don't know why, but and say, you know what? I was wrong. You know, I apologize. You know what I'm saying? Um, I got my, my cousins and my nephews and stuff. They all want to be rappers and they all want to smoke weed all day long. And then they get mad to me. I can't find a job. Well, of course you can't find a job because they want a drug test. You but, know what but, I'm but, but it's legal now. And, but, and how, but, how are they getting around these? But, in, but, in, but, in, but, no, you know even I mean? though it's legal, it's legal now. But that's only because that's federal. But you got to realize when you go to state jobs and you, in California, you still got to take a drug test. And if you don't pass the drug that's test, it. you don't get the job. So my thing is this. This is what we have to learn. Um, even though we, they, I don't believe this new census. I don't believe, I don't believe we only rose by 1%, the black population. I think that it's, you know, I think a lot of us probably didn't do the census this year because we don't want the government in our business. But this is what I think. This is what our people need to be. We need to be the owners. We don't need to be the workers anymore. We need to own. We need to own our own stuff. I remember when I did Jason's Lyric, you know, we did that song, You Will Know. I remember um, Kenny Green, he said, think about this. We got 40 people on stage. All of them got number one song. They said we had sold a combination of 80 million albums. Back then, albums were like 13 to $20. Now, you divide 80 million by, go 80 million times, who got a calculator? 80 million times 15, 16 dollars. How much money is that? Man, I gotta get on my calculator. Here. How much money? Tell me how much money that is. Okay. Eighty million by how much? Eighty million records they said we sold, right? Eighty million records, okay? By how much? Eighty million. So by back 15? then, so so say back then the records used to be what fifteen, sixteen dollars. One billion two hundred million. Something so like fifteen dollars equals. That's one billion two hundred. One was that one billion two hundred. One billion two hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred million, ain't it? So think about this: when we did Black Men United, we were estimated a worth of one billion two hundred million dollars. Now, Kenny said, Kenny said, just think if we decided to strike and say we ain't doing this no more. And I remember um, one of the uh, after seven. I don't know if it was Jason, I forgot which one. He said, but they'd be 40 other niggas behind us don't understand what we're trying to do mm -hmm. and take our jobs. Mm -hmm. And that's what the problem is right now with that we have to realize that, I mean, how come a boycott in our community don't really work? They don't care. They Boycott all you want. Scream and holler all you want. Yell, yell at the mayor all you want. Shut down the freeway all you want. But guess what? Nothing gets done. The only way it's gonna get done is if me and you we take over. We instead instead of letting these old senators and all you can't represent me. You don't know how I live. You don't know where I live. You don't know how I feel. You don't know what it's man, I'ma tell you, you don't know what it's like to be in a car with no tags, right? <laughs> you know your shit ain't right. And the police come behind you. You know, you know what I'm saying? I tell I tell white folks all the time, do that. Just get a car and don't put your tags on it and you know and, and bust out a tail light or have a light out and let the police and just drive in front of the police or behind the police. And tell me how you feel. I'm going to skip subjects on you for a second. Uh, I want to ask you about, like, has there ever been a run-in with, a, say, a, another R&B group that they just didn't, y'all just didn't vibe? Not, you know, this is old stuff, you've so we can talk up, about it You've now. been looking at stuff, huh? So just, just, just talk about it a little bit. Um, well, okay, so I don't know if it's still in, <laughs> on YouTube or in the whatever, but yes, my group, we got. So what helped us out was that, remember when the trial came and Reginald Denny got beat? Yeah. So at that same time, we were in um, Virginia. We were in Richmond, Virginia, and my boy got shot. Mm -hmm. um, my boy, my, my security guard got shot and my road manager was shot. And that was because um, in Virginia, I guess when we got there, um, they they wasn't really, but they were saying, yeah, y'all think we punks? Y'all think, you know, and um, I was kind of, what I did was I um, I used to escape a lot. Cause Ham would be like, you can't stay in the hotel, you can't go nowhere, you're in Richmond, Virginia. You know, y'all think it's country, but it ain't country. These <laughs> Negroes be, you know, this and that. And they had a beef with West. But at the time, when we would go back east, they would always say, y'all think y'all are that, y'all gangster, y'all think y'all, you know, this and that. And they would come for us. And we, there was a time when there was a, a guy who owned a club who wanted us to perform at his club, but Hammer had a friend that actually owned a club in Richmond. 
and he said, uh, no, don't go to that club. You got to go to my boys club. So we went there and when we got out, the dude was mad and um, he was like, yeah, y'all niggas from Cali. And the thing is, I used to tell my boy Chris this, if you're going to get a gun, a Glock, get a black one. Don't get the shiny silver one. No, nah, hell yeah. Because the minute, even if, even if, you know, you, it looks cool, but the minute, I said, even if you're in the nightclub and the disco lights going off, the, the silver spins, it, it shows, mm -hmm. it pings off the lights. And the dude came and said, hey, and he said, um, yeah, I, I'll put a cap in your, and Chris got on the bus and said, pick, that's his name, they call him. We got that too, and he showed the gun and put it back and got on the bus and all of a sudden, um, and I was known as Deuce Deuce the Shooter back then. Hey, so, Deuce Deuce the Shooter in him. So y'all better is, stop playing. And I only cared, y'all gonna laugh at this out there. So I carried a 22. 22 like a BB gun. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> bop, bop, bop. But it can do some damage though. If it hits you, it can mess you up. But I, and, right and, and, and I was known for having like a um, anger management back then. So um, Ham would say, um, Take Deuce's 22 from him because when he gets mad, he might go off and do something. So um, they took, so my house was our, uh, house took my gun, he had it. And what happened is, I'm always talking. I ain't gonna lie, you see me now, I'm talking. That's what's and up. I was, and so we're leaving the club and when this is all taking place, I am still in the club about to go out. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I hear the gunshots and house is on one side trying to shoot and the rest of them are inside the um, the, the the bus or, or van. I mean the um, the tour bus. I'm out in the front door and I'm trying to get on the bus. But his name was Richard Carpenter. God rest his soul. He was a Boys to Men's um, security guard. Mm -hmm. He happened to be in in Richmond. I think he lived there. And he was rolling with us. And we didn't even pay him. And Richard and his other partner, they put me back and jumped on top of me. God is my witness, man. While the people are shooting at me. And they jumped up and they opened the club door and they threw me back in and said, lock the door. They locked the door and the people were trying to get at me. The guy, the club that was in, he had a car. He put me in the trunk and they drove me to um, the hospital. And my Craig, I remember, God rest his soul. He, did you know Craig Brooks? Uh, he used to live in Dallas. He, owned, he was um, Deion Sanders' right-hand man. Okay. Um, he, was my, he was our road manager. He worked with Hammer. And he just died this last year. But wow. he lived in Dallas. Sorry to hear that. Um, and so Craig got shot. And um, um, my, uh, I think a Frosty, one of my security, got shot. And um, um, the tribute, And then when I get on the bus, the phone rings. And Hammer's on it. Talking about, nigga, you fine. You were supposed to be on the bus with <laughs> You were supposed to be on a bus with them because they didn't know where I was at. They was all nervous. <laughs> they like, didn't know, yeah. And so we had that happen. And so after that happened, um, we started getting like, um, like we, would, like um, necessarily up and coming groups. You know, like we'd be somewhere and we would get like tripping with us a little bit. You Who, know, what um, groups? Just I can't. I don't want to name because I. Wow, I mean, it's always twenty years I mean, old I mean, now. I don't, I don't want to name the groups. Twenty five years old. But some people, some people in LA know some things that happen. <laughs> um, you know, I, I had a couple beefs with some people that I don't know how I got in the beef with them, but you know, now be for the reality show. But oh, so y'all got to watch. See that we don't get this exclusive. There's some big time people that I got in beefs with that I don't even know how I got in the beefs with. You know what I'm saying? Man, I got a story. When when I do do the reality, that y'all gonna really trip out. Wow. Because my boys no, left me hanging man, like I don't know what. You ever, you, ever, you ever have somebody that wanted that they, that people think, oh, he said he gonna shoot you, and then you with your boys, and then you walking up to them, and then by the time you get to them, your boys is gone, and you <laughs> by yourself, and you're like, hey, I thought you had my back. Right. Uh, I will kill you this one. Can I tell you this one Tupac yes, story? Yeah. So we're on the road with Tupac. We was in Chicago, and we had to go to North Bend, uh, South Bend. South Bend, and when you had to take that little plane to go from Chicago to South Bend, and we had a dat, back then we used to carry these big old dat uh, players that about this big. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't know they took the dat system. They had to, they said, well, there's too much luggage on here. We have to take some stuff off. So the plane was late. So by the time we got to the venue, um, Pac was upset, and he put MC Breed on for us. Mm -hmm. But we was like, no, nah, we here. We going on, and MC Breed had our dressing room and everything. So. We went, we made um we made MC Breed leave the um his dressing room, and he went to Pox he went to Pox uh, dressing room, and all I could hear was somebody and see, I knew Pac from Digital Underground. I knew because I'm from the Bay, and he him and my cousin Amir the one that, they used to be really good friends. Okay. And if you ever watched I Get Around video, um um no the Humpty Dance, 
Tupac's on it and my cousin's on it. Oh, and yeah? He, yeah, he's dancing on it and stuff. Yeah, him, him. they're together. Yeah, you see him dancing and stuff. And so um, what happened is is that um, my boys was like, well, ain't Pac your friend? And I said, well, yeah, I know Pac. And they said, well, what's going on? So all I heard was this, did them niggas know who the fuck I am? And somebody was throwing a chair and doing some stuff, and it was Pac. So, um, so what I did was I went over and I said, well, I'll talk to him. So I go and I knock on the door. <laughs> And the guy said, "What you want? What's up?" I said, "Hey, tell Pac it's Deuce. It's Lamar. Um, tell him he, he, he all right. Hold on." So he goes. Now at the time, I asked the group, "Did y'all want to come with me?" They said no. But by the time him going to go with Pac, they opened the door. Everything cool. So they all come out. <laughs> so now they're behind me. So when oh, Pac comes to it makes it look the door, a way. Pac is like, "What's up?" And I said, "Oh, I was just trying to make sure you was okay. I heard some stuff like that." Oh, he goes, oh. "Now me and Pac know each other, right? Personally." Like we've had a bond, we've talked, we know each other, we from the Bay, you know, all that stuff. He flipped so, out. Oh, man, did he flip out. He was like, nigga, I can't believe you gonna bring your boys with you up in here, me and you is cool. And I was like, and I, at the meeting said, oh man, no Pac, Pac, look, I was by myself. And they just came out. And so um, I think Chris might have said something kind of like, we're just making shows. So he goes back in. So that we did the show, great show. We get back to the hotel, I see Pac. I'm thinking we're gonna be like we were before. Pac gets on the elevator with his bodyguards and um, he just sits there still. I say, hey Pac, that was a great show. <laughs> hey Pac, you ready for tomorrow? He don't say nothing to me. He mm. didn't speak, Pac didn't speak to me for years. Pac, How many years? Oh my God, it was it was some, actually um, when they did I Get Around, Yeah. Um, what happened is uh, money, be, money, money was there and I remember I called Mun and I said, oh, Mun, y'all down? I said, I want to come. And Mun said, um, I said, but I know Pac. Is Pac still mad at me? He goes, man, Pac ain't mad at you. I said, are you sure? Because he ain't spoke to me. And he went over there and he was like, hey, come on down to the, to the um, what you call it? Because I really, because you know what? I really thought, one thing I'd say, I say about Pac, um, and Money B always tells this story. Um, shout out to Money B. Money B was my manager for a while. Um, he would say, if Pac believed that the sky was blue, but you told him it's not actually blue. Um, it's actually a reflection from the 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 water. Mm -hmm. He he wouldn't believe you if if Pac if Pac, if even though that's it's blue right there. If Pac said no, that's orange. You could not convince him that that was not orange. So he was that one. He just one dimensional when it comes down to what if, he thinks. If, if Pac, thought but how did y'all man how resolve did, resolve, resolve the how issue? Did, how did you end up time? Whenever you finally started talking back, I mean, or did you ever? I, he, we ne I never discussed it. It was just, you know, I, I mean, I'd heard that. I mean, I know that some people were like, yeah, we like Deuce, but we're not too cool with the rest of the group. You know, I used to get that sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I, and so, um, but it was it was cool. You know, I, I have to admit, um, they took out, oh, um, Pac wasn't just, um, oh, what was I going to say? He, he, he. He, he, he wasn't just a hero for our generation. Pac was consciousness mm -hmm. for our generation. You know what I'm saying? A lot of things that he said, people are now doing, are listening to and going, damn, Pac was really deep. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's because, like I said, we were raised in that, we, we were raised in that, like I have to give it to my mom, being with Nairobi College, mm -hmm. being, learning about where we come from, uh, growing up learning what names were, learning of Swahili, learning about your culture, learning that a lot of black people don't know this, Kwanzaa is not an African tradition. It's from Long Beach, California, where, where DJ Kelly from. Think so. It's from Long Beach, California. Karenge, he, just, he decided to put African principles okay. in it. But when you learn your true history, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm a, people gonna be mad for me saying this, uh, not every African in Africa liked us and some of them helped sell us out and get us over here. So don't just say white folks, just because I because when you really study and you go to Africa and you study, you find that white folks didn't want to go in a jungle because they they would catch typhoid fever and they catch all those diseases. Mm -hmm. So they would have us go capture the people and bring them over. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some people get mad at that, but it is what it is. And as I can tell people, just because we came over on boats doesn't mean our people ain't great. You know, and when I say, and this is what I tell people, when you see a black woman and you see a black man, speak to them, because you never know who they come from. They might be royalty. That's we don't, true. We don't know our heritage. That's true. I could be for, I could be a king's great, 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 great grandson. But even, you could be, but 
would you ever find out eventually? Well, you know what? Is there a way? Cause well, like I found out. I, I did my DNA. I mean, um, you know, I do, you know, of course I got you know what I I, You know what tribe but my people or what from Mali, But my people from Mali. Mali. Right, but you don't know and if the greatest you are descendant. King, but the greatest king ever was from Mali. Right, but you don't know if you descended from that king in particular or you well, just I can have dreams. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just taking No, over. no, sorry, you done I'm took sorry. over the show I'm and sorry. I'm glad you, you came a long sorry. ways to take over the show. I love your no, spirit, sorry, your energy. You made my job easy and, and, and I'm glad you came and you can always come back here and I'm not just capping. This is real talk. I, I love your energy. I love your vibe. Well, I love your energy. I love but your I, vibe. But, but we ain't got the vibe yet. You just been doing all the talking. That's what it's here for. Quiet, I'm sorry. <laughs> but we brought we brought up. This is this uh, what happened. DJ Khaled. This is what happened when you we put an old school DJ legend Khaled. on. They ain't been on yeah. television in a long man, time. And I love you, it, know, man. You're doing a great you know, job. You got it. You know. You, uh, you know. But um. But I. Hey. But I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I thank you guys for letting me come up and, and talk and stuff like that. Man, because, I'm enjoying it. Because this. Um. You know. You don't get to. You know. You don't get to put pearls of wisdom out there for people and let them, you know what I'm saying? You can do it on Facebook and stuff like that, but here people are really going to listen and they're going to take note. And some people ain't going to like what I got to say, which is fine. But even the music y'all, y'all industry. Get in the house party. I'm going to step away for a second. Okay, I'll get in there in a second. But even in the music industry, the way how it is now compared to where how it used to be, you, I see more artists um, gravitating to the business side because before it was, uh, I'm just an artist. I'll have my manager here. I have this person. I don't. I just want to sing. I just want to rap. I don't want to do nothing else. Now you have more artists. Oh no, I know the business because I'm not gonna have nobody screw me over. I'm not gonna take this three. I'm independent. I'm this. I'm that. So they, in order for them to do all of that, they have to know the business. So what do you think about where the artists have been now compared to where it used to be? Well, I'm happy for them. I'm happy that a lot of them have taken their own and said, look. I'm not going to go with the record company. I'm going to go independent. I'm going to watch my own money. I'm going to do this. I'm going to market myself. I love it because we didn't have those opportunities back then. We had the what we call it, the 800 pound gorilla, mm-hmm. which was the was the record company, and the record companies would um, manage everything. You know, I'm, I'm, I was trying to tell him about um, when um, we did Gangsta Lean. I remember the next video was called Scoundrels Get Lonely Too. I wanted us to be riding up in limos or cars and stuff. And I remember the record company telling me, "No, we're not going to fund you for that." We want you to be on the streets. We want you to still be grimy. We want you, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, but people know we just sold two million or more uh, records. I know they know that we're coming up. So why don't you let my people see us coming up? And the record companies didn't want to do that. How hard is it for you to um, adjust to the new way of life with the music industry right now compared to where you're coming from? Well, you know, like I tell people, and and Cali, and uh, social media, Cali will tell you, um, I'm still old school. So it's kind of, you know, I'm trying to catch up. You know what I'm saying? Like, Like, I have Facebook. I'm that old. I know. I tried to and look you up on Instagram and I couldn't find you. Yeah, I'm on Instagram, but I'm DRS underscore gangsta lane. That's why. So what happens is, but what happens is I forget about Instagram. And mm. that's all the youngsters be like, hey, deuce. Instagram, TikTok, you, you got to be, be on all of that. I'm not even on Twitter. They're like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, you got to be And you know, and, and, and I'll be honest with you, I give them props because that takes a lot of time to be able to upload mm-hmm. this and do mm-hmm. this and put this on Instagram. Put it's this a on business. Facebook. It's a business. You know but you can get you know? paid. Yeah, well, now I'm learning that someone said, well, just put it on Instagram and, and you can It'll have go it go both both, mm-hmm. both. I'm just learning that mm-hmm. so you know so so I have to admit there is a curve there for us older artists and stuff like that um, but but now like you see like the other day Shaka Khan and, and Stephanie Mills did verses you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying that's really gonna help them out you right. know because that's the new technology that's the right. new thing you know think about it you don't have to one thing I did do though um, during the pandemic um, n- not taking anything from uh, what's his name the DJ but I um, I actually, during the whole pandemic, God woke me up and said, go online and start doing concerts. So if you guys go and you look on YouTube, you'll see that during the pandemic, I started in my living room. And I just started doing, I called it Deuces Get Down. Yeah, because the way how society is right now, everybody wants, with social media, everybody wants to feel like they know you without knowing you. You know what I mean? And that's what social media does for an artist or for individuals, people who are um, internet famous. You, You be like, you talking about this person like you know this person like you live right next door to this person but you don't really know them because people they let you into their lives and it makes you feel like you know them you know what i mean okay. so you tell right? us about you okay? okay so tell us about house party 
Okay, now house party. Now, there, now y'all see That's DJ. How we him. D, DJ, now this is now this is my new venture that I'm doing. This is DJ Cali, uh, DJ Cali remix, and um, I met him through my cousin Candace. Candace Joseph was like, "You got to meet DJ Cali. Um, you got to meet him. Y'all got to work together, do some stuff." So we got online together, and I ain't gonna lie. You know how people tell you, "Hey, brother, I'm gonna work with you. We are gonna do this and that." This is a brother that really does work, mm -hmm. and he says what he's gonna do. And he, he means what he says. And um, so he was like, um, I wrote a song called um, uh, Put Your Ballot in My Box. And basically what it was, uh, just before the election, God was like, hey, you need to write a song about the, uh, about the election. And I was like, okay, but I don't want no corny song. You know what I'm saying? So I got this idea called Put Your Ballot in My Box. And basically I'm talking to my woman. My woman's telling me, you know, put your ballot in my box. So... So even though I'm talking about voting and stuff, you know, it's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? I put my ballot in her box. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, um, I got sidetracked when I seen her big old booty. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. So I kept thinking these things and I was like, well, you know, I don't know if the public's gonna really take yeah. to it. And my boys, when I went to the studio to record it, they was like, deuce, you crazy. Ain't nobody gonna, ain't nobody gonna listen to this. But I did it. And I put it on Facebook. Now, let me tell you, we was talking about technology. This is what I did wrong. I put it on Facebook. I got 15,000 views. But I really should have put it on YouTube and then put it on Facebook. So what happened is, um, 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 and she's from Houston, um, Tammy Mack, KJLH, heard it. She called me. She said, dude, you got an MP3 on that? I said, yeah. She goes, give it to me. And so she played it in KJLH in LA. And people were like, oh. Man, who is this? And she let's do some DRS. And they're like, oh man. So so I got this little, you know, you know, it's um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, uh, Southern Soul. Got the beat and everything. So he heard it and he was like, man, you need to start doing some Southern Soul. And I've been told this because R and B is kind of out the door now. There really ain't no it's true. Not out the door. Well, yeah. no, there's not really no no. There's not really no true R. These are new R and B singers aren't really singing R and B. Really, the Southern Soul singers are doing the real R&B. That gut-wrenching, that, you know what I'm saying? They're doing that. And DJ Khaled is in the forefront. DJ Khaled remake, he's in the forefront of doing that. Mm -hmm. So um, he called me and he said, hey, man, let's work together. And um, he got me on a show out here in Dallas uh, called The House Party. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead, talk. Oh, yeah. Doing? This is DJ Khaled, yeah, remix, y'all. Yeah, I got him on a show out here in um, Dallas. Got him on show coming up in Galveston, uh, January twenty second, and I got him on a show. Um, we are in New Road, Louisiana. Uh, DRS Lamar is going to uh, New Road, Louisiana, in uh, January twenty first. Yeah. Then I think we in Lufkin on February twelfth, mm. pre Valentine's Day, and then Waco. February 11th in Waco. So we moving. We also working well, tell with... About, tell them about tonight. Oh, tonight is the house party. You know what I'm saying? With Frida Robinson right here at the Expo Center. Uh, it's going to be nice. It's him uh, coming to do your show. Y'all got to come out and see him do... Y'all going to thank Teddy Pendergrass and came back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, oh, my you, God. You, you, better, you better be right. Let me tell you something, man. Let me, let me be real with you. Don't don't go in there playing with Teddy Pendergrass. Listen, li listen, man. Let me, me not, 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 let me just be honest with you, man. It's a lot of people, you know. There's a lot of it. Ain't just turn off the lights, TKO, and all those songs. Oh that man, listen, man. It's pressure when you start dealing with Teddy, man. If you got to go back and listen to him and uh uh. uh that I want to feel the fire. I think that was mm. Stephanie Mill. Yeah, Listen, man, that. don't play with that stuff if you're not ready because that there gets you in trouble. If I should lose your love, any <laughs> reason, any reason at all, just let my record show I gave you all, oh, the love of. <laughs> Boy, yeah, you saw me. I'm gonna leave you alone. I'm gonna leave you alone. I can't do it. I got something for you. So I got two artists named C. Jones, aka Mr. Willie, and Do Right Man. They up under me too. Lamar is gonna be the newest member to DJ Cali team. Okay. Okay. C. Jones produced a song where he did a re like reversion of the Turn Off the Lights. Really? Which C. Jones got on it. Then we put Billy Sway in the middle. He's down here to do the third part. Hey. We're going to be putting it out probably like next month. It'll probably be out. 
Man. But the song is amazing. You know what? Let me let me ask you something, man. DJ so Khaled. I don't, I don't, I don't know if Khaled he's going to be able to edit this for tonight, but if y'all right. here, y'all come. I'm doing some Teddy. I'm doing some DRS. And I'm doing that new song, Put Your Bell I was in trying to do something. That's why I wanted him to do the last part so I could just cut out the last part and just throw me out a little skit just for y'all. So, okay. Yeah, it can be done. And it can be done quick and throw it on some ways where we got real, real penetration. But, man, how hard is it to when you meet a guy like DJ Khaled to, uh, you know, you this is a new relationship for you, uh, you know, uh, to trust. To come up with you, you know, to to say, hey man, I'm going, I'm gonna trust this guy with what I'm doing to come well, in my but business. Well, he know my family. But I ain't worried about no, no. I'm talking about but you. How me, you feel about but, it? But you know what? When he, when I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a praying man. And so when I met him, and I, my cousin was like, no, he's the real deal. No, you gotta. And he always tell me, no, he, he always get people to calling and there and go. Tell him, tell him, tell Deuce what I can do. And I'll be like, and he, I know he feel like Deuce just be like, whatever. Nigga, I'm rolling. If I, one thing about me, if I'm rolling with you, I'm rolling with you. And All what way. happened is that when I started talking to him, and he just started talking to me real with me. Tell me, look, we, I'm gonna have to do like a little contract. We gotta do this and that. And I was like, okay, he real. And and I saw his hustle. And then once he got me the show, he was like, I got another show for you. And I was like, okay, if he believes in me, I need to believe in him and be like, okay. And so he said, we family. So I'm like, okay, we family, let's roll. We're gonna do this, you know what I'm saying? So my thing is, like I told him uh, at the court one time, um, I, I'll work for you, I'll make you a millionaire, but you gotta give me something. You know what I'm saying? Let me come up as well. Because if I'm a millionaire, you're a millionaire, and something goes wrong with you, if I'm a millionaire, I might be able to help you out. You might, I mean, I mean, you can't go to your broke friends and say, hey, can you give me $200,000? <laughs> but if we came up together and I got money and I'm slipping, I might say, here, I'm going to loan you $200,000. You know, you know the guy from Subway? Um, the guy that, Jared? No, no, no. Um, the guy that started Subway, that he just died. He was like 89, oh, 90 yeah. years old. He got a loan from his friend for $1,000. And he helped, and that's how, that's how Subway got started. A thousand dollar loan, he died a billionaire. Already, think about that. Somebody went and loaned. Think about. So apparently that man had some money. You know what I'm saying? And now, you know, I'm pretty sure that he was like, "Hey, you right. need five hundred million. You need a you know, million dollars. You need." That's what we need to do in this community. And that's the reason why I'm rolling with him because I can tell that because um, he want to make money. I want to make money. You know what I'm saying? Let's make money together. I like. Let's it. roll together. I, I'm so you know. I ain't gonna lie. When I think of Southern uh, Soul, I think of. Uh, uh, my guy, uh, you know, uh, Sir Charles Jones. Charles. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I think of Sir Charles Jones. I think of uh, LJ Eccles. LJ Eccles. Poke Bear. Poke Bear. You Poke know, I, I Poke mean. Poke Bear. Hey. I went home to be with my side. <laughs> that boy got I love it. Let me tell you when they do that little dance. Because you know, we haven't come out to California. And, uh, and, and then the ladies start throwing the panties on his <laughs> So when he got off, he didn't pick him up. And so I got on the mic because I was hosting. I said, I said, hey, you left your panties on. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I do want to say that, you know, when I did bring him in, I told him, look, man, I'm here to work. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of people in the industry in the Southern Soul. And uh, it's a guy that's been in R&B for years. Start off with with uh, Zero and, and, and all them big people. Lil Kiki, his name is p Rod, Patrick Rodriguez. Y'all can look him up. Uh, but he's making noise right now, Southern Soul. If you listen to all this Southern Soul music that he produced, it's none of them sound the same. It's none of them from Do Right for Nipple In It. Look on YouTube, it's called Nipple In It. You know what I'm saying? Songs like other songs that we done did. I also produced a song that I did a redid of Tony, Tony, Tony. You know what I'm saying? The Man. So I got Do Right doing Missing You. And then I got this new artist, C, uh, C. Jones, which is AKA Mr. Willie. But what I wanted to say, P. Rod, is taking the time to work on this album. And he done produced Brian McKnight, Kim Burrell, Angie Stone, Tony Tony, uh, uh, Mary J. So he's taking the time, he said, why he out here? Let's work, Callie, let's work. And wow. that's what I told and him. And you don't find, and I'll be honest with you, at home, you don't really find love like that no more. You don't, you don't really find people that say, I believe in you, let's do this, let's work together. Let's, let's come in and do that. And, and that's what I wanna do, like this, this new round. I wanna just inform, brothers and sisters and say, you know what? Let's put down that guard. Let's let's be the owners of this. Let's let's you know, y'all got this, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm praying that people come, people see, and people and that's why I put on my Facebook and say, Hey, look what they got. 
Look what's going on. You know, come, come. You know, you, y'all see. I love. You know, I said, yeah, I love joggers. And when I came in, I was like, I could have came here yesterday. I went to the mall, <laughs> but I didn't know about the place. But that's what we got to start doing. My mom has a little business. It's called Shirley Sugar and Spice. She do essential oils, all that kind of stuff. My mother makes beard cream. She do the. She has this back stuff that's really great. I gotta get with and, her. Yeah, well, <laughs> she's in Sacramento though. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? But and um, they have like in Sacramento, it's called a uh, Florin Square. But it used to be called the African Marketplace. And you know, they have a whole bunch of businesses that came together. That's what we gotta start doing. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta start doing collectives. And, and then, and then yeah, it might cost a little more because you got, because be honest with you, you ain't Korean, so you're not gonna get that Korean mm-hmm. discount. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna get that white man discount. Yeah. So you are gonna, maybe your shirt might be a little bit more. But what we gotta understand is that if I uplift you, and this is what the problem is though, if I uplift you, and I make your store, and I'm, I'm giving you money. You got to give back to me as well. For sure. And that's what happens a lot. Of, a lot of times we don't do that. We keep the money. We keep getting the money in. Keep getting the money, and we'll do nothing for the community. Well, I think that's that's one of the things that kept us in the community as long as we've been here is because of the things that we've had to uh, do to to help the community and help the uh, you know whether it was giving back to single parents like your mother was. Uh, we had uh, times when all single mothers came in and got free shoes when everybody else was on tax free weekend. We gave stuff away that weekend. So this is the stuff that keeps us going. Uh, homeless people, homeless guys that walk by here on a daily. You know, just getting an opportunity to help. Uh, uh, you know, do things to 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 keep people understand they got a place they can come to that supports the community. That's not about trying to make uh, the most out of every single item. That's We've been here because we've always been the type of people to try to help others, man. I really do believe that. You know, so that's probably why your mother has been doing it as long as she has. It's, well, it's, yeah, my mother, I ain't gonna lie, I gotta give it up to my mom, Shirley Shepard. I, love, I love you, mom, if you watch this. Um, my mother's been a, I call her a Christian hustler her whole life. My mother, my mother, I go, you know, and, 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 and I was telling somebody, say, if I ever meet Oprah, I'm going to tell her, you know, dang, you Oprah, you got my mama trying to be you, you know, the whole life. But I'll be honest with you. See, I come from my mama, my mama, I ain't going to lie, my mother used to drive around and she would see pine cones on the ground and she'd make us get out the car and say, pick them up. And we'd be embarrassed. No, mama, I'm going to pick up these pine cones. You might see me. And she would get them and my mother would air dry them and she'd make wreaths for Christmas. And she'd do that. My mother did T-shirts. Awesome. My mother did. Uh, she went. She went to floral school, so she could. My mother had like a little floral company one time when she was trying to do the corsages and do all that kind of stuff. And my dad, um, even though my, even though I didn't grow up with my dad in the household, I did. One thing I have to say, I did grow up with my dad. My dad had a business. I had a barbecue restaurant. He had the yogurt. He had the car detail. My dad. So my parents always did something. And before my dad died, uh, I actually got my mom and dad to do a restaurant together. And uh, and that and I tell tell people that had to make you feel good, man. You know what? As a kid, my prayer was always for my mother and father to be together. Whose prayer is not that? And you know what? And and God had to remind me, even though they weren't married, when my mom opened up, she opened up a restaurant, um, and it was you know, and 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 I was living in L.A. and she was in Sacramento, and I called my dad. I said, Dad, you've had the restaurants, you've done this and that. I need help. And my dad came. He came moved to Sacramento and. Uh, Help my mother out. And help my mother out. And one day I'm sitting there and I, I walk in the place and my dad is on one side barbecuing, doing some stuff. And my mom was in the kitchen cooking. And it was so nice to go, hey mom, hey dad. Hey, dad. And you know, and, and God said, I gave you what you wanted. And I, it ain't how you wanted it. But you got it. But I got it, but you got it. And that's what we gotta sometimes remember that when we pray things, sometimes it ain't in the time you want or how you want it, but he'll give it to you. Hey, and be very very particular of how you pray yes. because sometimes we think we want something until you get it and I always say God is a very humorous God oh he is sometimes you pray for something and when you get it like mm, I didn't want it you weren't very specific of how you wanted it a house party you know uh uh, we're getting back to house party because <laughs> y- y- y'all keep rolling past house party. Uh, I want to roll back to it again. Um, who all's uh, guests that's going to be there tonight? Uh, you got a lot of, you got a couple bands going to be there. Uh, I don't have a flyer that I know. Well, uh, I have it, but my uh, battery low. I know, uh, like I said, my, my artist, uh, <laughs> C. Jones, too low. <laughs> uh, a.k.a. Mr. Willie, going to be there singing the song Mr. Willie, uh, Do Right Man, uh, Nigel Perkins coming all the way from Atlanta. My boy Lamar, but I also want to say I got a good friend 
that just came in town. He's also coming to Ooh. see you, man. Ooh. He's the hottest, one of the hottest DJs in Los Angeles, San Bernardino. Don't work with everybody and won all the battles in the DJ battles in Ooh, California. Battle cat? Mr. Mystery, right there, y'all. <laughs> Right there. Well, right that's there. the boy making all that damn noise. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell, hey, Mr. Man, he want to have a hell of an DJ entry. In the DJ, oh. you, you, you going to start DJing in the middle of the damn ball star 101 show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I good, didn't even know nobody was back good, there. Good to have I was you, wondering man. what y'all was doing. I was like, okay. <laughs> Don't count I, was like, I was like, let me make sure ain't nobody trying to shoot me. <laughs> nah, this <laughs> ain't Cali, man. We good, I believe. I hope so. <laughs> yes, my boy, man. <laughs> oh, good, me to me you, good to have you. Good to have you. Tell me all the stuff about DJ. Jen. He's the hottest dude in California, man. Wow, that that's, that, 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 that's what I'm talking about, man. Unit, unity. They say our people don't get along and get get together, but you got all these people that have been built up on our backs. The Jay-Z's, the Kanye's. The, they start out in black communities. They get their uplifting first from the black community. And then they're able to lunch and cross over. Yeah. That, it happens with us first, and I think a lot of times people don't acknowledge that enough. It starts with the, 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 with the community that, that surrounds you, yeah. and then you get uplifted through black. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like well, it's yeah. just like when Melvin told me when Melvin see I didn't realize when he called me that time with uh, Diamond Carter. Yeah. Okay. So Diamond was doing the show with y'all, and so I'm the one when Diamond said um, my brother was my brother was killed, and he called me and said, "Can you do me a favor? Can you sing Gangsta for us?" So I sang Gangsta for on on you know on, on the, the phone, phone for her. That was me singing it to her, and it, it just think how things come back around. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. Here I am on your show. Well, you're on the best show in Dallas, Texas right oh, now. Really in the South. In, and probably in, in the, the world. South for sure. Probably in the world. I, it, we, gonna, we, we No, we not going to, we not just going to, like you said, I'm you got to think about when you pray things. I'm no, not no, no, in no. California. No, you will be after this. I, so I, my I, thing, I be, I'm so going my thing anyway. is, is that don't, um, like you I've said, you got to pray for what you, we ain't just going to do a little territory. We going to do all around the world. So y'all want us everywhere. Well, everywhere. Hey, man, it's going down, baby. Put, your, put your helmet on and your chin strap. Everywhere. You know what I'm talking? And with this oh, internet, yeah, you can be all. everywhere. Oh, you yeah. can be everywhere. <laughs> Anytime you guys are here, yeah, man, y'all know we love you, man. Thank you, House man, party, man. man. It's it's you tonight, guys, I think tickets Y'all got to get out there, man. 20, it's 25 Something like before that. 9, nine what o'clock. what time it starts? $40. Uh, it starts well, at 8, 7 o'clock. The door's open. Starts at 8 o'clock. Now, I go on about 11 o'clock. Okay. But um, you guys got to... Uh, Pass. We gotta pass. So, so we have, yeah, we have, I'm, nah, I'm gonna come a little later. I'm, yeah, 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 I'm gonna come yeah, a little later because I bring my cameras and my yeah, microphone. Stop later. playing. Please do. I can yeah. bring my cameras and my microphone. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm cool with it. Bring I can bring my mics cool. and y'all. We can set up there. You got my release already, so you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the release on you as soon as you hit the door. You ain't for the just be telling us what's going on. Every time he performing in Texas. I he coming through? There. I need y'all there. Hey, we, okay, hey, we gonna be there. Right. Well, I'll talk one on one. I got you. We got you. So, so I, I, I got to give it up for Melvin. Thank you. I know Melvin. That's my guy. I know Melvin. Like, Lamar, no. you talking too much. <laughs> 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 no, no. That's, you, that's the homie there. You gonna be like, nigga, shut up. He probably back next week. He coming back. I, we trying to um, redo everything we did before. Uh -huh. We gonna, we thinking about bringing it back. All yeah, the way well, back. Yeah, well, I'm gonna say All this. the people. Now, I don't really know this, uh, uh, what's his name? What's, uh, I told Charleston, him all. Charleston, oh, Charleston White. White. I don't really know him, but I will say this. Um, um, and, you know, nothing negative, but I do like, I ain't gonna lie, he does say some stuff that really make no, you think don't no, it do really make you think and everybody I, and, says and that. I do I do love when he's talking about and because I said the same thing we need to be the owners and he says he thinks that oh, he we need thinks to be the, we don't need to be the workers and we need to be the owners because if we become the owners then they'll learn about us and our ways and our customs and how we do mm -hmm. things and how we how we treat people because then if we have that think about it they Race, we could really knock out some a little bit of racism. Mm -hmm. Listen, that. man. Because in the, in the future, and white folks going to be mad about this, we all going to be brown. Mm -hmm. or Listen, or something. Cause, it's just, you know what I'm it's, some, all, it's we, something to Charleston <laughs> White, man. Everybody, he, he, everybody, either they hate him or they love him, but they damn sure watch him. Well, I was yeah, in everybody Galveston, I was in Galveston three weeks ago, and uh, I didn't really, I heard about him, you know, I was, I was in LA with some stuff, and there was some funk going on, and, and I was in, in, the, in the barbershop in Platinum Cuts in Galveston, and everybody was just glued watching. Told watching. You. And I was like, okay, like, he NBA player? He, mm. No. When they said, no, he just he just beat a case, and you know when he was seventeen and <laughs> thirteen, and thir oh, he 13. didn't beat the case. They actually, they, you got to look him up. It's a lot. No, to no, him. I thought they, I thought they um, exonerated him. Well, they right? did, they, they, they did him. after he, yeah, but he had went All through it years. already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, and I don't know if people know your story. You know, we we really got to celebrate those that went in, that came out, that with a different mindset. 
Hey. Because when you went in, you didn't have the same mindset. Say, man, it's exactly. a song. It's, so a, it's, it's, it's a song, reason. a church song. Uh, I say church song, a godly song to say you won't leave here like you came. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah. <laughs> but and sometimes I think God does that for a reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, yeah. Sometimes there has to be something to choke you and say, hold up, what you doing? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. What yeah. don't kill you definitely will make you stronger. Yes. Definitely make you stronger. Well, so I want y'all to come out and let's talk about House Party one more time. One more time. Give them one more time. I did forget somebody. I did forget somebody, y'all. Who did you okay, forget? Ice Buck that sang the song with Nelly Travis. It's called Back That Country Strength. That is Michael Jackson. Purchasing cousin. Really? He's also going That's to That's tonight at house he'll, party. Interview him tonight, y'all. Michael Jackson Ice first cousin. Glenn, wanna, do me a favor. I think you say that one with Michael Jackson first cousin. Yeah, he don't want to wrote the new album with Tito real Jackson. Quick. Hold on, I'm gonna tell y'all right first now. Cousin, who's whose son is he? Uh, that's the mother. That's the father. Sister. Father, sons, cousins, brothers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I need to get your top three artists of all time. You hear me? Hey, hey, I need your top three artists. I'm just clowning right listen, now. Listen, top three artists. I need top three artists of all time. Dead, Dead or alive. alive. Any genre. All three. Uh, number one. Uh, Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder, your number one? Stevie Wonder, my number one. That's the first number Stevie two. Wonder. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. No, we got to Number two. I, I, like, I like crazy songs by Stevie, like Mr. Know It All. <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> number two. Number two would have to be, um, it'd have to be Teddy. I knew it. Turn it off. Yeah. We knew Teddy was going to be in there somewhere. Um, yeah. Number three. Teddy, well, you know what? Yeah, because when I was a kid, I didn't think I could sing because one of my aunties said, oh, Teddy, he just be hollering. He don't sing, so I didn't think I could sing. And number my, three. Number three. Oh, that's hard. Ooh, number three. That's everybody hard. said number three hard. Number three is hard. So they don't know to bump everybody out. You, but you gotta pick one of them. But you okay, it's a group though. I'll let you do a group. Yeah. Okay, okay, no, I'll do an artist and then I'm gonna do the group. Okay. No, you no, ain't you doing only number have one, one choice. choice. One choice okay. left. Number three. Um and everyone's gonna trip on this, but um the OJ. Hey, them boys went hard, man. The boys went hard. That's our yeah. first OJ. I don't care what you say, them boys went hard. A lot of people have slept on the OJ, <laughs> but if you hear and <laughs> listen to them. What's your favorite that song? Last that night we um, cried together. Go on, sir. Oh, oh, oh. What's your favorite thing, man? Stairway to heaven. I don't know. How does that go? Climbing the stairway to heaven. Here we go. Oh, yeah, that's a nice song. Oh, man, you got, oh, here, baby, here we go. Stay with the heaven. Yeah, yeah, it go step, hard. Step oh. by step. Yeah, yeah, hey. Step by step. Oh, man, when I was a kid, I the heard that. be on point, too. I was like, you know, and I'm going to be honest with you. Um, even though everybody love Eddie, Eddie LaVert. So oh, most mm -hmm. definitely. Walter is a bad You like man. Walter. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I really thought, because if you listen to EJ and me, I, I, I always thought we sounded like, um, we could be the OJs, but when you mm. when you think back to the OJs, you y'all y'all left that whole phase. Y'all come out with big uh, dicky suits on. Yeah, uh, y'all <laughs> niggas wasn't coming out like no OJs. You niggas had on. Well, you have to realize that, that, that was the culture. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You niggas had dicky suits on, long cars driving, and, 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 and I never seen even though, to that video. And even but though I sagged, you didn't see my drawers. Okay, wait a minute. Now you look I sagged, but you didn't see my drawers. Y'all, that ain't how it started out like that. Y'all was different because they come back to the mic when they were they were singing, and then they'll come back and come back to the mic. You niggas had on dicky suits jumping in cars with Uzis. That's something different. But I'm gonna let you make it though. Wait, listen, listen, listen. So look, we got house party tonight, and it's Ice Buck. It's um, look, I'm getting on C Jones. It is um, Addis Al Harrison and the Mojo Band. A DJ Cali live in the mix. We got Elroy Jackson and the Legends Be Funky, Do Right Man, Mr. Understanding, Taste the Flavor, and you got me, Deuce, and you got also, uh oh, this Derek, hold on. All right, hold on, my boy. And you got Nigel Perkins, the soul singing, and you got Co that Cole, Cole album release. So you guys come on out tonight. I know the tickets are like 25 a person, couples $40. I think they got tables and stuff. It's at the Expo Event Hall. Um, that is 2550 West Redburn Lane, Suite 300, Dallas, Texas, 75237. Next to Hair Gallery, Beauty Supply. That's amazing. I can't wait to see it. So y'all come out. I'm going to do Gangsta Lean tonight. I'm going to do No More Love. I'm going to do some Teddy. And I'm going to do uh, Put Your Ballad in My Box. Yeah, and yeah. you go on around 11, you say. Yeah, I go on about 11. But don't Close the your show. show. So y'all be there. Also, oh, you see? closing the show. It starts at eight, and it ends at about twelve. Twelve. Yeah, twelve. Yeah. Okay. 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 So come on out. Come on out and um, come see me. 
I hope y'all can stay to the end, but um, come see me. I ain't gonna lie. Um, I ain't coming unless you got that dicky suit on. That's the only way I'm showing up. <laughs> yeah, nigga. Yeah, I don't know no, nothing no, about no, the dicky no, suit. No, I don't know nothing about the dicky suit. I didn't bring the dicky <laughs> suit. I do have one, though. I do have one that I do wear sometimes, but since this really wasn't a deal, this is the Lamar Deuce Lubin show. Mm-hmm. Hey. I'm, gonna, I, I'm gonna come in, in my style. Okay. So, what is your style? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're gonna no, shut no, it down, no. man. We love you. Oh, I love y'all, love man. You too, DJ man. Khaled, but hey, it's we, your show. We, no, we got, no, no, we family yeah, well, now. Well, we, yeah, 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 yeah. Melvin, Melvin, you messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Say, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.